Hey guys, welcome. Everybody, come on in. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. Will, how are you? Hey, doing? I'm good. Happy birthday, Robert. I got me a cupcake and I'll eat it for you because I, I love you. I love you, baby brother. Thanks. I got, well, <laughs> well, screw you too. I got me a uh, latte art, a little lopsided. That's ah, a little lopsided, you know but I can, I can tell that's an onion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wrong way. Wrong way. Other way. Okay. All right. There we go. Anyway. Happy, happy birthday. It's my birthday, birthday, everybody. Yay. It's my birthday. Thanks, Will. I appreciate it. I'm old. Yeah. Uh, uh, for my birthday, Nintendo decided to give me a Nintendo Direct. That was okay. <laughs> and not only not only that, but Sony heard it was your birthday and said, we can do that too. <laughs> hey, it's Bob's birthday. We want to show up also. We'll come. We'll come Yeah, we want to also show games that he's not interested in. Yes, exactly. Uh, okay, well, along with that, of course, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, yes. But you guys are going a little crazy right now, so I have to say hello to you guys first. Uh, like Kate McCat, thanks for 100 bits with the happy birthday. Thank you. With Sardi with 100 bits, happy birthday. Thank you. Luke Anton with 34 months. Hey, Wolf Bros. Can't make the stream today. Make it a good VOD to listen to on my way to classes. No promises. <laughs> okay, I'll make it a good VOD for you to listen to when you're right there. Uh, when I listening to it in headphones. Um... Underscore, thanks for the 56 months. Hello. Uh, Layer Shift, thanks for the five gifted subs. That's a lot of gifted subs. Indie Gex, thanks for the two months. Flippy Beard, thanks for the eight months. Happy birthday. Thank you. Drac, thanks for the three months. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Now let's... Enough uh, about you. Let's talk enough about, about me. Let's talk about the wild hijinks Nintendo got into today. So yesterday they announced they were going to do a Nintendo Direct today. And then you know what? It's mm -hmm. crazy. They did it. Yeah. Um, this was a long one. It was 40 minutes. It better there have been long. We of... were waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> there were a lot of games packed into it. There were. Um, and I'll be honest, I was like, tuning in and out half the time <laughs> i almost fell asleep i sunk into my chair i actually yeah. i also almost fell asleep during the state of play but luckily it ended before i could <laughs> yeah that's a good thing about the state of play it was short yes. <laughs> and it felt short mm -hmm. uh, uh, so let's go what do we got all right well we'll just start it off with the with the big news uh Breath of the Wild 2 is now officially known as The Legend of Zelda uh, Tears of the Kingdom. This is out of order? Out. This is out of order. I'm pissed about it. Sorry. I wait, uh, I have a... I, have a I, I, can, I can do an in-order one. But talk about that. Why not? Okay. Everybody cares about All that. All right. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, it'll be out on May 12th of next year. So very, very soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, is that soon? It's soon for a Zelda game. That's like eight months away. And it was delayed already. Months, it was delayed already, yes. But like I feel like when they finally announce like the title of a Zelda game, usually we get the date for like a year away. This is, you know, May is not that far in the grand scheme of things for a Zelda game. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, yeah. it's been a while. Yes. It's been five years. <laughs> That'll be six <laughs> by the time this comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a pretty substantial gap, especially for a Zelda game. Yeah. Uh, the new trailer contained footage of Link exploring Hyrule, both on land and in the sky, and gave us a look at some new st uh, stasis powers and the shattered world that Hyrule uh, looks to have become. It also featured a bunch of skydiving, Link riding aboard a stone bird, and more. Yeah, there's uh, this uh, thing in the trailer. He's got like these... like. Uh, teal like canisters on him and it looks like there's uh, a, a, a like a bar on the side of the screen that yeah. manages those uh, those canisters or something all right so I'm in the keep I put a little tweet thread by our buddy Nibelian and uh, okay. he just live tweeted the stuff that happened to the director okay 
uh it's a good he, he's a he's a he does good does good little roundup yes yes the first does. thing that happened was fire emblem i know how much you love fire emblem <laughs> i have never played a fire emblem game <laughs> You know, I was. So, I will say though, this this tweet thread doesn't let you. Uh, does it doesn't have a little synopsis for you to read? Yeah, so I'm gonna. I guess you. You say the game in order, and I'll just like Control F find it. All right, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem Engage is the next main entry in the Fire Emblem series, and it follows the story of set a thousand years after Four Kingdoms sealed away the great evil known as the Fell Dragon. In Engage, players will become a divine dragon called Alir, who must work to collect emblem rings to bring back the to bring peace back to. Hold on, I've lost my spot because IGN really decided to play a video, and I hate IGN. Why video. did you pick IGN for the article? You know what? Because it was a panic move, and it was the first thing that came up, and they had everything there. I panicked too. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, fire, fire emblem engage. Uh, players will become a divine dragon who must work to collect el- emblem rings to bring back peace to the continent of Ilios. Along the journey, you will be uh, able to have other previous fire emblem characters join your party, like Marth and Celia. Uh, fire emblem engage will be released on January twentieth. I'm a little confused. Uh, you know the website Hard Drive? Yeah. They're like the Onion, but for video games. For news. games, yeah. They have a roundup. <laughs> but it's like real, though. Oh, wow. It takes two okay. Fatal Frames, Xenoblade. We're not reading this. I'm just confused why they have a legit roundup. <laughs> yeah. Maybe why they have real news. I'm sure there's like some, some, some kooky jokes in here but yeah it just threw it threw me off Mm -hmm. all right anyway uh yeah so fire emblem this game i don't know much about fire emblem this looks different i know it's a tactical rpg and i know like i know it's very anime inspired but this Mm -hmm. looks like way too anime even for anime so it brings back old characters Mm -hmm. and I remember three houses looking less. Uh, I remember three houses. Less looking, anime. Yeah, yeah. I remember three houses looking better than this. Yeah. Maybe it's because all of the footage I see of three houses isn't the actual gameplay. Because <laughs> there's like a lot of other wacky shit you do in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yes. But this this looks like almost like a phone game. That's what it is. It's like yeah. super simplified, super super stylized. Um, something's something's yeah. up here. I'm 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 confused why three houses to me look better, but may, again, maybe it's just it's just I I'm not used to seeing the actual gameplay. Maybe yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was the first thing they showed. Uh, I was like, cool, okay, another fire room. I'm happy for the fire room people. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, that comes out uh, January twentieth. January twentieth. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Next is It Takes Two. The charming co-op adventure will be released on Nintendo Switch on November 4th. The game can be played on one system, on two systems via local wireless, or online with the included Friends Pass that lets you gift a free copy to your co-op buddy. That's awesome. That's a big deal. Yes. So I haven't played this, but I played their previous game, A Way Out, which was great. Yeah. And one of the best features of that was that you could... Uh, uh, only one of you needed to buy the game and you could play yeah. with, with with a friend uh and this had the same thing and the fact that nintendo is kind of allowing that is crazy oh uh, yeah because they're very weird about that stuff um mm-hmm. ah this this might get me interested in this game uh, this is one of those, yeah, one of those same. This, this is one of those things where every time a game showed up here i was like oh sick i can play it on my switch maybe now i'll finally <laughs> buy it on steam <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, I don't have that problem, so I'll just buy it on my Switch. And this looks like the perfect Switch game because all of my friends have Switches. So if I get it, then I can share it with them for right. at least one at a time, and you know, have have a good old good old fashioned good old fashioned multiplayer session. Yes, there may be many more good old fashioned multiplayer sessions later on. Hint, hint. Oh, uh, but next, next is Fatal Frame: yes. Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. 
uh, first released in Japan on the Wii in 2008 and never made it to the West. Um, it will finally arrive on the Switch in early 2023. The story follows uh, Ruka Minazuki, uh, who must travel to an abandoned hospital to use the camera obscura to discover her lost memories and repel the evil spirits uh, that will try to get in her way. Uh, this is actually a very big deal because uh, Fatal Frame is a very well-known cult classic series. Uh, and Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, like the article said, never came to America, despite a lot of fan interest and a lot of, you know, fan petitions to get it over to the West. So uh, a little spoiler alert for the Nintendo podcast this week. Uh, we are Ooh. sponsored by uh, Play Asia, and mm -hmm. they sent Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water. Oh. Uh, I, I thought this was the same game. <laughs> it is not. No. So if you'd like to play Fatal Frame, a maiden of Blackwater, you could play this. Yes. But if you want to play uh, the Japanese game that never came to America until now, uh, wait. Is this bit. not Japanese? Uh, that might be the localized version. I didn't know they made a localized I thought all of them were Japanese. No. No. Oh. A lot of them came to came to the West. Well, never mind them. Yeah. It says voices English and Japanese, and subtitles English, yeah. Japanese, and Chinese. There you go. Anyway. All right. Uh, Next, we yes. got our first look at uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Wave 2 DLC, wow. including a new mechanical hero called Eno. Uh, the second wave of DLC for Xenoblade Con Chronicles 3 Expansion Pass will add a new mechanical hero named Eno, of, or I know. It will also add challenge battles and new outfits. The DLC will be available on October 13th. She's got a big old neck. They made neck. a very big deal of the fact that she was mechanical. <laughs> it, it was like that was the whole point of her introduction. She's a, she's a robot. She's got some she got some metal bits in her. Maybe that's a that big deal in, in Xenoblade. Because, I mean, you fight I robots, guess, don't you? I guess. But, I mean... There has to be something a bit more interesting than that. <laughs> I mean, she looks cool. She she looks like uh, Pyra and Mithra. I mean, yeah. I don't really know much about Xenoblade, but good <laughs> good for the weebs. We're we're doing it's a good weeb direct so far. Yeah. Uh, next up, I'll just fire the next four off real quick. We got SpongeBob SquarePants, the Cosmic Shake coming next year. We got Fitness Boxing, Fist of the North Star coming uh, March twentieth. Uh, we got Oddballers coming uh, early 2023 and Tunic on September 27th. Uh, so did you see the Fist of the North Star trailer that they dropped? Yes. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, it kind of was. It, yeah. uh, it was it was insane the way that they announced it. I was, I was yeah. sitting here going, are you guys serious? We've been waiting for a yeah. direct for so long and this is what you do to us? They, they, they opened it up like it was going to be like a crazy Fist of the North Star game. And I was like, oh, shit, this is Fist of the North Star. This is like a big deal. And it turned yeah. out to be a fitness boxing game. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, get ready to be fit. And then it like turns all fun. It yeah. Was so, it was ridiculous. I mean, I'm sure like we got a lot of anime fans in the chat. I'm sure you've all seen Fist of the North Star. I'm sure you've seen some Fist of the North Star games. They are out there. They are ludicrous. There's one made by the Yakuza team that is insane. This is not that. <laughs> I Scarlet, mean, it's insane, but in a very different way. Scarlet Knight in the chat said, shit post of a game. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. So I have played Tunic, and it is good. It is a very yes. good game. It's like an isometric uh, link to the past or something. But it's like mm -hmm. a little more... I don't want to say it's a little more adult. It's just... It's got... It's got a little more difficulty, you know what I mean? Right. No, I uh, get it. However, uh, this trailer, the frame rate was like four frames a second. Like it didn't even look like thirty frames a second. Right. And and you know, normally I'd be like, yo, it's whatever. Like as long as we're getting it in a portable form factor at all, it's fine. I'm happy with it. But it's been five years of the switch. Other people are catching up and fixing and 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 figuring stuff out. It, I'm kind of over it. Like, especially a game like this. Like, this is, I mean, 
there's some graphical stuff going on, but there's got to be a way to get it to run a little more consistently than it than it's doing. Yeah, I I feel like had this game come out on Switch at the same time as the other systems, it wouldn't be a big deal because it you know it would have gotten released. People would have gotten it for whatever system they wanted. Would have played it on their first and not been sullied. Exactly. Be like. The differences between the other systems would have been lost in the shuffle. Now that there's that time has passed between the launch and the switch, the launch of the Switch version, and people have seen what the game looks like already and see what it's gonna be, mm-hmm. kind of hurts the game a little bit. Yeah. So you can get it on Game Pass now, which the chat is yeah. reminding me about. Uh, I got it on Steam, and if you get it on Steam, will uh, yes. you can also play it on a Mac. And I think uh, is- I, it might only work on an M1 Mac. Okay. But it runs great. The first time I tried to run it, it just didn't work at all. And I was like, oh, I guess this game right. doesn't work on Mac. And then I tried it again, and then it just worked beautifully. Um, I don't know if it's only for M1, but uh, it worked It worked freaking awesome on my M1 Mac. So this game is very versatile. I don't know why yeah. it looks <laughs> like the way it does on, on yeah. the Switch. I'm very confused. And, and, and I don't really... Originally, I, I'm like, I don't fault the developer because, like, you know, they got they don't have a lot to work with. It's the Switch, but I'm looking at it and it's like, dude, it's Tunic, man. It's a t- it's a isometric yeah. little I, like say, like indie game. Like, it's really like, it really shouldn't it's be pretty simplistic yeah. in terms of like art style and graphics. Like, get rid of you some know. of the particle effects. You know, you don't need them. <laughs> yeah. If it, if it's gonna compromise the frame rate that much. And yeah. I'm like, this game doesn't need like a high frame rate, but it just it looks no. worse than thirty. Is is yeah? Is my like, or maybe I'm just super sensitive now because I've been playing it on other stuff. Maybe, but I feel like even then, like thirty, like in this day, especially in this day and age, thirty is like the limit mm-hmm. of acceptability. If it right. if it dips, dips below that, everyone notices, not just people who are sensitive to that kind of stuff. Right. And if everyone can notice that the game runs slower on Switch, that's a problem. Right. Uh, next front mission front mission first remake and front mission Two remake get a new look um they were both featured in the direct and the first game was revealed to release in november and the second game will launch in 2023 additionally it was reconfirmed that front mission 3 remake is also in the works um so these are popular mech games from back in the day uh the second game never came to america uh but now it is so oh that's a big go Mm-hmm. Um, FromSoft. Oh, okay. FromSoft has the Armored Core license, I think. Yes. Okay. That's that. That, that, I'm, that I got a little confused. I, do they also have the Metal Wolf Chaos license? <laughs> they also have. They okay. also made Metal Wolf Chaos. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. If you've never heard of that game, Google it. <laughs> yeah. It's worth it. Um. Okay. A lot of mech games. Uh, no. have I played? I played one. I mean, it might have been Armored Core. Might have been I, Front Mission and Armor Core. I mean, I don't know if they're the same genre, but they're very similar from a visual standpoint. So you might have gotten confused. I'm getting confused right now. No, I played. Yeah. I played Armored Core because one of my friends at school was like going off about how great Armored Core was, and then I played it for I yeah. think PS2 or something, and I just could not do it. <laughs> it's so I do hard. Remember- Pretty sure it was Front Mission, f- the box art for it, because it was on PS4. No, sorry, it was on PS2. It was on PS2, and the box art was just a dude and a chick, like, horizontally, and a blue box. And the background was blue. Wait, what? That was what? it. Tells you Which nothing game? about the game. Front Mission 4, the fourth Front Mission game. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've never seen this before. I I remember seeing this box art in like Target all the time. And I was just like, what the fuck is this game? This is like, this tells you nothing. It's just two people laying down. The mechs are so tiny. Yeah. That's that's so stupid. Yeah. I mean, that was the days when, you know, video game marketing got wacky. Yeah, true. All Uh, right. Uh, Next, we got... (laughs) The farming game number one. <laughs> uh, this is sto- a story of seasons, a wonderful life, which is a remake 
of Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life for the GameCube. It will be released on Switch in the summer of 2023. Harvest Moon is very confusing now. Yes. Uh, uh, I believe Story of Seasons is the original series. Yes. Exceed took... Uh, Exceed kept the games but lost the name yes. or something. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, Harvest Moon is... Uh, the name Harvest Moon has now been put onto games that are, from my understanding, are not as good as the Story of Seasons games. Correct. Uh, I remember when that happened at E3, I was play. We we saw a Harvest Moon game, and I was, you know, I didn't know any better. I was just trying to make appointments with whoever would yeah. take me. Uh, and yeah, I played Harvest Moon, and I played like a lot of. They have like a lot of Harvest Moon stuff. And I played yeah. all of it, and I was like, this isn't good. I'm not having fun. <laughs> um, but that's not all for Harvest Moon. We'll get more. We'll get into that later. Yes, yes. For you farmers out there, hang tight. Uh, but next, uh, Splatoon 3's first Splatfest will have inklings choose between gear, grub, or fun. Uh, the first Splatfest for Splatoon 3 will arrive soon, and it will ask players to decide if they'd rather bring gear, grub, or fun with them to a deserted island. This first Splatfest will take place on September 23rd and run through the 25th. You know, I've been playing a little bit of Splatoon 3, and uh, I was like, it's okay. It's an okay game. Like, I'm not <laughs> that into it. But I've been thinking about it. It's kind of a fun little, like, mindless, like, you turn your brain off type of multiplayer game. Yeah. Yeah. I can see this be, like, an inoffensive, you know, just, just have fun type deal. Also, you know, no, have a... nothing to get, like, competitive with. We don't have a story for it, but uh, Nintendo announced yesterday that uh, they sold 3.5 million copies of Splatoon 3 just over the weekend and just in Japan. Wow. So that's how popular this game is in Japan. Yeah. I'd be surprised if they hit 3.5 million in the rest of the world in total. <laughs> I mean, usually with big hit, video games they sell most they sell a lot in america mm -hmm. and they i mean not to say they don't sell a lot in japan but like the numbers are usually like in the millions in america but only in like the like hundreds of thousands in japan because the countries are different in size uh mm -hmm. for it to sell three million in japan but not here that's a big deal <laughs> it's insane uh, th this game yeah. feels very japanese it feels like uh it, it, they make a big deal out of it, and then and then it comes here, and we're like, "Why is this a big deal? I don't understand." Yeah, it's like, "Why is it so wacky?" Yeah, it, it's it's a big deal over there, so I understand yeah. why it 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 did it. I mean, I'm sure it sold fine. I'm sure it sold exactly what they expected, but it yeah. I I'd, I'd be shocked if it came anywhere close to what it did in Japan. Yeah, anywhere my, my else one, in the world. <laughs> my one friend who just recently got a Switch doesn't really play video games all. I gave him, we had a the Splatoon 2 uh, Switch case, so I gave him that as like a welcome to the club gift, and I'm trying to explain to him what Splatoon is, and he just like keeps giving me the con most confused look. I'm like, you play as squids, you shoot each other with paint, uh, it's very Japanese and like high fashion, and like the soundtrack's kind of pop punky, and he's like, what? It has all uh, of the makings of, of something I'd be really interested in. Yeah. Uh, also, of note, Chats reminded me again. It is the best-selling Nintendo Switch game at launch ever in Japan. It beat everything. That's a big deal. That's insane. So, a part of that is because of the huge user base of the Switch right now. Yeah. Um, so I think regardless of how you might personally feel about Splatoon, get used to seeing a lot more Splatoon in your life. Because if it sold 3 million copies in Japan alone... We're going to be seeing Splatoon 4 before you know it. I got no problem with uh, people liking Splatoon. Yeah. I have a problem with people liking anime. They should all stop. <laughs> no. um, I uh, will say I, I, of... I was disappointed about the single player. The single player is not that good. I was uh, really yeah. hoping the single player would be really good, and it's really not. Maybe I need to get farther into it, and it'll open yeah. up a little bit. But uh, I was really hoping for like some platforming and like being able to like chain moves together and stuff. And it kind of mm -hmm. like a Titanfall situation, uh, no. but it, it doesn't flow as good as I would have hoped. Yeah. That's it. That sucks. Do you think it's because 
uh, do you think it's because like we're used to like Western style shooter campaigns, and this is explicitly a Japanese shooter? With, no, like, I'm wacky Japanese I'm open style to the wackiness. I just was hoping more for like a fleshed out Nintendo campaign. You know, like I, I want right. the gameplay to 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 be really fun and fluid, and it just didn't. It Got just, it. It's not clicking. Yeah. Anyway, Wolfden Dad's in the chat. Happy birthday, son, too. I hope you have a fire extinguisher standing by when you light all those candles. That's an yeah. old that's an old person joke. You get it? Because I'm old. Like a lot of candles. <laughs> yes. I get it. That's yes. good. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good, Dad. <laughs> uh well, speaking of anime and our father, Octopath Traveler 2 was uh will be released on February 24th and will bring it bring with it a whole new group of heroes and a brand new story to experience in the world of Celestia along with a uh, same wonderful 2D HD art style that set the original apart from other JRPGs. It will I... not be exclusive to the Switch. This is according to IGN. It will not be exclusive to the Switch and will also launch on PC, uh PS5 and PS4. Interesting. So this is a square game. So that makes yes. a little bit of sense. Uh, I will. I would like to issue a challenge to our father if he's still in the chat. Ex- try to guess what Octopath Traveler Two is about <laughs> with just the name of the game. Just try to guess yeah. what it's about. Um, yes. I'll give you a hint. It has nothing to do with octopus. True. Uh, so. Uh, this is a Square game. I think Square is trying to be sold to PlayStation. I think that's why it's launching on everything. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Not on Xbox. And, you know, if we get to it, we might have a reason why. <laughs> um, but next up is Fay Farm. It is an RPG with a mix of magic and farming. A uh, farm sim RPG for up to four players that mixes the best of magic with the fun of building and caring for your very own farm. Fay Farm takes place in azoria i'm just gonna say arizona and players will need to use their skills and spells to help rebuild the world i'm putting a farm counter on the screen farm count <laughs> this is two. two this is One, two. two farm count is at two uh, uh and there you go you gotta do a fey farm yay we got more farming for, yeah. for you farm lovers out there at least this is a four-player game, so you could be bored with friends. <laughs> Dad's really lagging behind. He says, at, le- at least you don't have to worry about spitting out your dentures. <laughs> yeah. He's still on well, me being old. <laughs> g- give him... Remember, he's older, so things are slower True, he's got True. He's got a long time <laughs> to go. Twitch even works slower for old people. They're like a little yeah. behind. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> next game. Is this another farming? No. Oh, it's Final Fantasy, but it's got a stupid name. <laughs> Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm Final Bar. Um, this is the ultimate celebration of the franchise's music, and it's a brand new entry in the series that began on the 3DS. This new game will feature 385 songs and will let players, uh, let two players play locally with up to four players online. It will also have a season pass that will add 90 new songs, including some from Near, Octopath Traveler, and Live Alive. Uh, this will release on February 16th of 2023. Uh, 385 songs is insane. That's a lot uh, of songs. Actually, this says, oh, deluxe edition and premium edition. You can get up to 502 songs if you pay more money. Yeah. People on Twitter were saying, uh, uh, uh Theater Rhythm is back. Apparently, this is a thing that's been around. Never heard of this. Yeah, before. I did like this, uh, it says it's a long running series, but no, I don't many of these games that came to America. <laughs> I just assumed it was this Japanese only series that I was supposed to know about because I like video games. Dad has responded about Octopath Traveler. He said, That's easy. It's the second path you take to get to the Halloween party. Ah. Like October. Yes. Very good. <laughs> now, you know what? I don't know if that's right. I know nothing about Octopath Traveler, <laughs> too. <laughs> okay. Uh, next up, Rune Factory. This is farming. Does this count? Yes. Oh yes. yeah, there Rune, we go. He's farming. Rune Factory Three was originally released on the DS in Japan in 2009. 
Uh, it will be getting a new life on Switch in 2023. Uh, Rune Factory 3 will have players farming, building relationships with the locals, uh, caring for monsters, and much more. There will even be a new mode that will let you enjoy quality time with your in-game spouse. Ooh. And All they right. confirmed that a new, Rune, a new Rune Factory game will be released in the future. Don't tell the wife, am I right? Well, I mean, you know, my wife recently got off a of maternity leave and had to go back to work. Uh, and when she, she's home, all we do is spend time taking care of the kids. So I don't spend quality time with her anyway. So might as well spend quality time with a with a in game <laughs> spouse. <laughs> interesting, interesting take. Yeah. Um, I'm kidding. I'm never gonna play this game. Farming is for nerds. She's I'm open cool. to an open relationship uh, with you being with an anime girl in a video <laughs> game. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I understand. More uh, or less. All right, now we got the fun time Nintendo 64 games. Yes. We got, let's start off. We got Pilot Wings. We got, go. we got the Mario Party trilogy. Mario Party 1, let's 2, and go. 3. We got Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. Let's go. We got 1080 Snowboarding. Yeah. Let's go. And Excite Bike 64. Yeah. I'm a little upset because 1080 looks like it's going to take a long time, and that's the only one I care about. Yeah, all I know. I mean, it's cool we're getting Pokemon Stadium because a lot of people are really excited about that. Okay. Mario Party, fine. I mean, that could be fun like to play on Nintendo Switch Online for some people. It's cool we're getting Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, but at the same time, did you notice a little disclaimer in the bottom at the when the fine print? No. Cannot import Pokemon. Oh, yeah. I, I did hear about that. I mean, so how would you have done that anyway? Their Nintendo, they could have found a way. Oh, Pokemon I just Home, feel like probably. the whole fun of Pokemon Stadium was importing your Pokemon from your Game Boy mm -hmm. into this game to play against your friends or whatnot. So to have to use the the CPU generated Pokemon in the game kind of sucks, and you know I don't know how they could have done it. You know they add rewind feature to some of these games. They add you know online play to some of these games. They could have done something, but they're just giving us a straight you know emulated port of the original games, and like they're not even utilizing it to its full capabilities. That's that's disappointing to me. I mean. Most of these are just straight up ports. Um, yeah. They could have done something with Pokemon Home, but they're putting zero work into any of this stuff. Um, yeah. But again, it's just a ROM. So there's got to be a way to just yeah. do it. Any I'm sure somebody will find something, a way to do it. Anything. I don't I don't it, think it, plugging in a controller with the, 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 the and putting the the little game cartridge thing on there would work yeah but there's got to be some way to trick it into into just making it work um anyway uh there was the one more thing with this section that is the big deal yes oh oh yes there was ladies and gentlemen golden eye is coming to nintendo we got switch him. online with multiplayer online multiplayer Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. Beautiful. Now, this is also coming to uh, uh, Rare Replay, and you can get it on Game Pass. Yes. Uh, Microsoft announced not too long after this reveal that they will also be bringing GoldenEye back to the modern world. Uh, but their version is going to be different. Mm -hmm. uh, their, their version of GoldenEye is going to be um, support... It's going to support up to 4K resolution. Mm -hmm. uh, it will feature a native 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Uh, it's going to feature a consistent steady frame rate, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to feature improved controls, including dual analog stick support. And it will feature achievements. Mm -hmm. So basically... The only thing this the Xbox version does not have is online multiplayer, which is a little crazy. That is insane to me. Online multiplayer is exclusive to the Switch version. However, the Switch version 
is still just the N64 game. So the resolution's going to be 240p. The frame rate's not going to be stable. You're going to have to deal with the weird control scheme of the N64 converted to a Switch controller. Um, it's as not far as we be, know. As far as we know. Well, so far, it hasn't been, you know, yeah, hasn't been great. We're basically just, given the past Nintendo Switch Online games, we're assuming that it's just going to be a straight port. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I I think it's gonna be pretty shitty compared to the rare replay version. However, you all this yeah. is the only way you can play online. I don't know how they yes. got that exclusivity. Maybe it's because they were like, "This is online." You know, it's our thing is is that it's online, so yeah. we gotta be able to play it online. And if you do it on Xbox, it's gonna be better than us. We don't want you to be better. Than yes, us. there had to have been <laughs> that had to have been part of the deal. That had to have been. Um. I will say I will say though, all things considered, the Xbox version might still be the better deal, mm-hmm. because um, in order to play it on Switch, you need to pay fifty dollars a year, because mm-hmm. it's part of Switch Online plus the expansion pack. On Xbox, it's either part of your Game Pass subscription, which yes is fourteen dollars a month, or part of Rare Replay, the digital version specifically. They made they made sure to specify the digital release of Rare Replay, which you can download to your Xbox right now for eight dollars. Yeah, so it's very cheap. You can get it now, and it'll be part of Rare Replay. Also, too, I'm pretty sure this means they will release it on its own and have it available on Xbox as a standalone title, mm-hmm. and that'll probably be at most twenty dollars. So a twenty dollar one time purchase instead of fifty dollars a year every year to play the greatest first person shooter of this generation, like it's it's not a difficult choice, regardless yeah. of whether or not it has online multiplayer. Uh, I'm I'm excited it's coming to Switch at all. Uh, I'm a little disappointed about the multiplayer because the, doing a four player is going to be just abysmal <laughs> on, yeah. on this thing. And and the fact that it's also coming to Rail Replay, I feel like they would have put a little more effort into that version to make it not split screen online because that yeah. would have that would have made it a lot more fun if if everybody just had their own screen. Yeah, um, I think we would have gotten a full. A full uh, remaster comparable to the Perfect Dark one. Uh, Solid Python in the chat says, Resolution is not 240p on Nintendo 64 Switch games. What the fuck? On the on the original N64, I believe it was 240p. No, it is. And then on yeah. the Switch, it's just upscaled, and it's not, it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. You cannot like, say those games are 720p. You just cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, when th- when this when these games come out, whenever the hell they come out, look at them side by side. It's One gonna, will yeah. be noticeably blurrier. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna especially if you're doing uh, a split screen four player, it's gonna look rough. Yeah. So yeah. I I mean I'm happy it's coming. Also, uh they they said the and the, the Xbox version is gonna have a steady frame rate. That's important because uh, the frame rate's very rough in a lot in like basically every N sixty four game. There's yeah, I think the the only one I can think of off the top of my head that is sixty frames per second is F zero. That's the only game. Almost every yeah. other game is sub thirty and dips below thirty because because uh, that's just, they didn't know what they were doing with three D back then. Um, uh, Golden Eye is particularly bad. Uh, it's so bad. Speedrunners, when they play this game, they will look at the ground when for most <laughs> of the game because you yes. go faster when you're looking at the ground because the rest of the world hasn't loaded in yet. Uh, yeah. So that won't be a problem on the Xbox version, but it'll probably still be a problem on the Nintendo Switch version. Yeah. Um. So... Uh, did, it, did it have a I date won't... or anything? when It just said coming soon, right? Yeah, it's just a coming soon. Mm-hmm. Um, did you see that the actual James Bond website had a press release for this? No. It, yeah, yeah, 007.com had a press release for this. It was the classiest looking video game press release I have ever seen. Do you have a link to that? Uh, I'll see if I can find it. 
uh, will speedrunners switch over? No, they, they, it'll no. be a completely separate uh, a, 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 a listing like for for for, yeah. for that version because it's going to be so different because you'll actually oh, yeah. be able to Today, see what you're doing this is the 60th anniversary of james bond so it would make sense for it to come out this year will it come out this year probably not the queen couldn't hold out for a couple days <laughs> uh yeah i i posted it what's so cl what's so classy about this it's just yeah something about like the white background with the black text and the gold uh okay. accents to it and just the way they talk about it it's very it's very classy james bond is a classy classy movie franchise the tweet is justified left <laughs> that's lame it's freaking uh, stupid well uh what else oh, 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 oh we can't forget uh this isn't we have we have to also add to the farm count because in Japan they got Harvest Moon sixty four. Oh yeah, so we're adding. It this is we're now well, that counts because you can get it in America too. You just need a Japanese uh, account and it'll just download and you're fine. Harvest Moon sixty four came to America, so I'm surprised they didn't include it in this as well. Yeah, it's very weird. So, so there you go. You're anyway. on, you're on four farming games so far. Yes. Uh, next is various day life. Uh, journey to the continent of Antiochia in the new immersive RPG various day life that features job progression, uh, strategic exploration, and an innovative battle system. Uh, available today on the Switch. Is this uh, 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 Square Enix? It looks like it's got the same font as Octopath. Yeah. Uh, not a farm game, though. Okay. Does Factorio count as a farming game? It's an uh, industrial crash, simulator. After you crash and are stranded on a strange alien planet, Factorio will task you building a new rocket to get home by utilizing the world's resources. As you grow your operation, you will be at risk from the planet's wildlife. Uh, luckily, you can join up with a friend in cooperative cross-platform multiplayer. Launches oh, cool. on the Switch October 28th. Uh, I'm gonna, no, I'm going to put a point .5. Counted. I'm going to put a point .5. But I feel like industrial is the opposite of farming. <laughs> but you're gathering resources. What are those resources? Probably like metal and iron and wood and, you know, things that you don't necessarily, you know, think of when you think of farming. <laughs> you're only you're only mining. I don't know, man. We'll have to we'll have to find out when it launches on Nintendo okay. Switch, October right, 28th. Fine. fine. Uh, all right. Next up is what? Ib? Ib, a creepy adventure set in an art gallery. Uh, stars a young girl who must unravel what is actually going on. Choices matter and will determine of the seven endings players will get to see. Uh, doesn't say when it's coming to Switch. Uh, spring. Did, it's coming this spring. Did, this did look creepy. It kind of looked like a Flash game, too. Kind of looked like yeah. something, <laughs> like, like a, something I would see in like a Markiplier video. Yeah. Uh, then we got more, more Mario Strikers. Yay! We got Pauline uh, coming. Pauline and Diddy Kong. Don't forget about Diddy Kong. I did. <laughs> uh, I, this will not get me to play this game again. No, I don't think any... But if you did not play this... If you did not like playing this game before, I don't think Diddy Kong and Pauline are going to do it for you. No. Daisy almost. <laughs> but not, not Pauline. Yes. Uh, next... Uh, Atlier Riza Three is this the this is the this is one of the games with like the like the sexy mode, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Riza and the Eleven Heroes will set off on an adventure in Atlier Riza Three: Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key. That's the full title. Uh, to explore the mystery behind the islands that have seemingly appeared out of nowhere, launching on Nintendo Switch February twenty fourth. I found. Uh, yeah, I googled it. <laughs> uh don't don't do that <laughs> I, I took the three off and i got i got a lot of i got a lot of things yeah anyway uh, uh next up mario yes. kart 8 deluxe wave 3 is coming we're getting merry mountain and peach gardens coming uh this holiday uh we got golf coming to switch por switch sports also this holiday uh, will be a free update. 
Uh, and next up, we got Miyamoto. Well, hold on. With Nintendo Switch Sports. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy we're getting this 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 golf update. I've been when they announced Nintendo Switch Sports, I wanted some golf because I wasn't that happy with Mario Golf, and I loved Wii Sports Golf. And this yes. is just that. So I I, I want to play it, and I I feel like I will like it a lot. It was supposed to be out pretty soon because mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's it should have came out with a game in the first place. Uh, but they said it'll come out later, sometime around now. I think it was supposed to come out. Uh, they yeah, they said they, they said they had to delay it. Yeah, uh, that's a little upsetting. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, we got Miyamoto, which usually with Miyamoto comes some Mario news, baby. Let's but go. Let's nope. hear all that Mario news. The uh, he announces that the Mario movie is still coming in spring. Awesome, glad to hear it. I know you'll do a good job. Okay, and uh, he announced. Uh, news about Bob's favorite Nintendo franchise, Pikmin. I thought you said, Forgot. I thought you said what happened. <laughs> Pikmin Bloom is coming to mobile. It is basically Pokemon Go with Pikmin. Uh, but the big reveal is that uh, Pikmin 4 is going to come out in 2023. Uh, there's going to be a new camera system where you can get a Pikmin view of the action. Uh, and also the new shirt. Miyamoto made himself a new shirt. <laughs> it's a cool looking shirt. It is a cool looking shirt. Some somebody I, I, I retweeted this though. Somebody tweeted at me uh, a little little modification for the shirt. Made it a little better. If I if I do say so myself. Uh, here it is. It's just it just uh, it's the same shirt. It just says piss. Of. <laughs> uh, a- Apparently, this game, according to IGN, uh, Miyamoto previously stated that the game was completion in 2015. Wait, say so that I wonder what you, you cut out. So long. Oh. According to IGN, Miyamoto said that um, the game was previously said to have been close to release in 2015. So what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did they remake the, the whole thing? Well, I no, guess. they had to. They were. Pro- I think they were waiting for the Switch version, but then, like, why did they take so long? That's weird. Yeah. Um, and I think the camera view is just a way to make you make the world look bigger because it's like just lower, you know? Yeah. Um, that's cool. I mean, I'm happy for Pikmin people. I know Pik- people like Pikmin. Play Tinykin. Mm-hmm. It looks like Pikmin, but a little better. Um, and uh, as far as Pikmin Bloom, uh, Miyamoto just straight up doxed himself. He like sh- showed like his yeah. <laughs> like Pikmin and showed that he's all around Kyoto. He's around uh, 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 just a certain area in Tokyo. That was mm-hmm. weird. And then he just left. Yep, that's it. Goodbye. Where, what's go Mario up to? Now. He's not doing it. Mario's not doing anything. There's no games. There's no Mario games yeah. on the docket. Well, he's all about that Pikmin life now. The thing is, like, Miyamoto doesn't really come out to announce the Mario game. So for him to come out and announce a game at all is a big deal. And I feel like, like, in recent years, his baby has been Pikmin. Because that was, like, the one of the last major creations of his. What do you mean, recent years? Pikmin hasn't done shit. <laughs> there's been three Pikmin games. I mean, like, just think about it. Uh, when Pikmin was released back on the GameCube, that was touted as the next big franchise for Miyamoto. Mm-hmm. What was the next big franchise from Miyamoto after Pikmin? A franchise, nothing. Yeah, exactly. If you want to count Nintendo Dogs, sure, but that was around the same time. Mm-hmm. So, like, for him to actually come out and say we're working on Pikmin, like, that's kind of a big deal. It means that he still believes in this series and it's putting his weight and his name behind the series. Um. Yeah, I I, I want to. I'm a Mario fan, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I want something going on. I mean, we got Spark of Hope, but like that doesn't count. <laughs> it's a Ubisoft game. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, next up we got Harvestalia, which guess what? Add another one to the to the counter. Uh, Square Enix announced that the demo for Harvestalia will be available today ahead of its november 4th release date furthermore the demo will let you transfer your save to the game when it's launched uh okay demo coming out for harvest daily yay uh, we already knew about yeah. harvest daily though um yes 
but demo, listen, I love when they release a demo on Nintendo Switch because uh, uh, you can try it out before you buy it, and that's great. Yeah. Uh, new look at Bayonetta, which is great. Everybody's excited for Bayonetta. Yeah. It was a very short look in this uh, Nintendo Direct, but they have a much longer a little description about what you can expect in, in a separate yes. video. Uh, set for release on October 28th, the new footage showed off combat, demon summoning, and Bayonetta's transforming abilities, as well as many more. Yes, 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 yes. So, never a dull, dull moment with old Bayo. They also have a rain code. Is this Danganronpa? Yes, new game, new game yes, by new Danganronpa game. creator. Oh, so it's is it Danganronpa or not? No, it's from the creators of Danganronpa. It's uh, Master Detective Archives. Rain code will will cast players as an anesiatic detective named Yuma as they work to solve crimes in a corporate controlled metropolis that never stops raining. Available on Nintendo Switch, uh, spring 2023. So Seattle. They're just in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Uh, next up is for Will, Resident Evil Village. Resident Evil Village, the cloud of Resident will be coming to the Switch. Uh, it will be released on October 28th, just in time for Halloween. And a demo is available right now. Later this year... Switch owners will also gain access to the cloud versions of Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and Resident Evil 3 Remake. So this is an example of a game I'm just excited to just coming to the Switch at all. Yes. Cloud version, whatever, it's fine. Um, I feel like this... Sorry, go ahead. I don't think they could have ported these to the Switch. See, I would have thought that initially, but I've seen... The PC like graphical settings for Resident Evil Two, mm -hmm. and you can scale that way down and still have like a very playable experience. So I feel like they could have and gotten it working natively on the Switch in some capacity. They um, they could have uh, if they were Bethesda, <laughs> yes, <laughs> or gave the money to Panic Button to do it. But uh, yeah. they're not, and they're lazy, and they. Uh, this is how they're going to do it. Well, I mean, I'm not disappointed. It's a cloud version. I think, you know, if you have the internet connection, uh, definitely play these games. These are fantastic games. Um, I just feel like, uh, and again, I know nothing about making video games. I'm an asshole in his, you know, very humid uh, home office talking about them on the internet. Mm -hmm. So don't take my word for it. But I feel like, you know, You feel like what? You cut out for a second. I, God damn it! I feel like it could have been done. <laughs> that that was a uh, that was an internet thing. I don't know what. Okay. You know, I'm gonna. Why don't we both leave and come back? I'm gonna quit Discord oh. entirely. Okay, I'm gonna hang up. I gotta switch off the of Discord completely. Uh, there's a new there's a new hotness in town that I gotta try. How do I close? There we go. There's a new thing. I forgot what it's called. It's called ping or something. Epos box made me use it and it was pretty good. Oh, beep. Boop. Hello. Hello. All right. Next. Uh, we got, uh, we got, a. Uh, 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 is this rapid fire? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Rapid we'll fire. rapid fire this. We got Sifu coming on a, on November 8th. Crisis Core Remastered, uh, December 13th, Radiant Silver Gun later today, and Endless Dungeon in 2023. Uh, Sifu, I want to play, but if, if this is another one. Doesn't <laughs> doesn't look very good on, on Switch. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like I, they even it, picked like bad gameplay to show. Like, they, like, like it yeah. was like a, just a, like not a great trailer just in general i mean hopefully by the time it comes out it'll at least run well i don't care if it doesn't look very good but as long as it runs like smoothly yeah. i'll accept it uh kevin um, kenson said uh 30 frames per second might be rough because timing's really important true i guess that's true um crisis core final fantasy 7 reunion that's like one of those weird spin-offs of Final Fantasy 7 that was released on the PSP um, that apparently, you know, if you 
like Final Fantasy VII, you play that game, but most of us are just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't understand Sephiroth. I mean, I, I don't know Final yeah. Fantasy, but what is he? He's like friends in the prequel? I don't understand. I got, I don't know, man. Uh, all right, Tales of Symphonia Remaster Farming? Uh, I don't think so. No, doesn't look like farming. Uh, Tales of Symphonia Remastered will release on the Switch in early 2023 and will let fans of the GameCube title and newcomers alike once again experience the story of Lloyd, Colette, and more. No farming. Fans say no farming. Just a regular old JRPG. All right, false alarm, everybody. Yeah. Uh, next we got Goofy driving a car. <laughs> uh, it was a mo- it's the montage and it's a Life is Strange collection. We got the Romancing Saga, Minstrel Song, Lego Brick Tales, Disney Speedstorm, and Fall Guys Season Two. Minstrel Storm. Minstrel. Okay. All right. Just 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 making sure. Yes. Uh, okay. These aren't exciting. Uh, no. Fall Guys is cool, but like we already. Yeah, but that. everybody's getting Fall Guys season two. So this is uh, cool, though. Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Yes. Uh, first released on the Wii in 2011 and 2023. We'll see it arrive on the Switch with a brand new pink puffy package. This update features up to four player multiplayer and a collection of mini games like Samurai Kirby and Magalore's Tome Trackers. It will be released on February 24th. Pre orders begin today i like um, the little mecha kirby situation like iron man yes kirby. it was pretty cool they made a big deal about how uh you can pl- everyone's gonna play as kirby this time mm-hmm. because usually in kirby multiplayer games one person gets to be kirby everyone else is not kirby <laughs> <laughs> and then finally the last one's breath of the wild too Breath of the Wild 2, a.k.a. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, May 12th, 2023. Trailer contained footage of Link exploring Hyrule both on land and in the sky. Gave us new look at Stasis Powers, blah, blah, blah. I read this all before. Uh, looked cool. Looks like a cool game. Yes. But it was very it short. Like and Breath did, of the Wild. Yes. Yeah, it didn't show us like anything really at all. Yeah. All it really showed us was that the sky is going to be a much bigger factor in gameplay than it was last time. Right. Uh, am I missing something? I thought there were six farming simulators. I only have five on the counter. Did we miss one? What do we miss? We even included uh, uh, Harvest Moon 64. So, yeah, we must have missed one. We must have. What, what were the farming sims? There was... We got Harvestalia. I added that. Harvestalia, Harvest Moon 64, uh, Story of Seasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, the frig were the other ones? Uh, Fay Farm. That's four. Harvest uh, was bad. Mm. Atlier Riza is not. No, Rune Factory. So that's, that's five. five. Yeah. So. So yeah, we only have All five. Right. Okay. Still, that's a lot of farming. Unless there's mo- multiple rune factories. Oh, new rune factory series announced as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> new series in development. Does that count? Yeah, that counts. So okay, six. so okay, we got we're at, we hit six. Everybody, congratulations. We uh, farming Yay. sim people get fucking stoked for this Nintendo Direct. Uh, all right. So that's the Nintendo Direct. Will, how excited were you for all these releases? Everybody already knows what I thought. I mean, it's cool. We got a date, a date, and a title for Zelda. Um, Goldeneye will always make me scream and throw my chair uh, <laughs> in excitement. Everything else, man, I don't know. Like, I, I just I landed with like a not a thud. But like, you know, like just a pillow falling. <laughs> yes. It was a soft landing. Not a lot for me here. I'm a little uh, disappointed. Yeah. I, I, th- I think the biggest disappointment for me is that I uh, got tricked by the GameCube rumors that they would. Yeah. Be. Also, also, like, I know that Nintendo's got stuff up their sleeve that they haven't talked about yet. 
and mm-hmm. they still didn't. So I'm a little upset about that. But um, also, yeah, I, I I fell into the rumors that we're getting GameCube stuff because people seemed so certain about that, and and yeah. uh, I I just I just played into it, and it made me get disappointed about this because I was sitting here expecting something new for a nintendo switch online i mean we got a bunch of cool uh 64 games which is cool yeah um uh, i think it's left cool me that the more. resident evil games are coming to switch mm-hmm. even though they are the cloud the cloud version um mm-hmm. i'm excited for sifu as long as it's stable i would play it on switch over playstation um but otherwise yeah i don't know okay uh let's take a moment here yes to read some notifications uh i think i left off okay titus praetor says uh with nine months says goldeneye was not fun as someone who didn't play them when i was younger either uh then again i play a game as crap as pod racer for the nostalgia um wait you have nostalgia for pod racer oh so he never so when he was young he just didn't play goldeneye okay i thought you weren't like old enough to have experience okay i understand now you you were this close to getting banned my friend (laughs) (laughs) um i uh, i understand that uh those types of controls uh these days are really hard to wrap your head around yes however i i said this already in my video i was surprised how much i've been enjoying playing perfect dark on a little emulator thing I, 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 that's not a game. I, I have all of these games I could play on this stupid thing. And that's just the one I, st- I started gravitating towards and I've been playing through the campaign. So, um, although I will say something's fucked up with my retroid pocket three, the, the home oh, button no. is stuck. I got to open the whole thing up and fix the home button. Oh, uh, geez. cause now, now it won't turn on. Cause like, I yeah. guess it's like Android. And like, if you hold the home button down, it does some dumb shit when you turn it on. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh yeah that's not something i was expecting maybe because i'm able to remap the controls in a way that it feels like sort of normal yeah but i don't though i think i just wrap my head around i don't know something about it it feels fine playing it uh it's it's not exactly fluid it's not like call of duty but it's not that's not really how you played it back in the day either you kind of took your time aiming and stuff i feel like you know for somebody who's never played the original golden eye yeah, unless they remap, unless they let you remap the buttons or they remapped it for you on Switch, the Xbox version will probably be the best way to experience it in 2022 or 2023 when it comes out because it will feature a more modern control scheme. Um, and the level design of the game, while featuring some odd elements that may seem out of place in this day and age, I think still holds up and is easy to you know, adjust your brain to that level of thinking. Um, but an archaic control scheme will hold somebody back who's never experienced the game before. Yeah, one of the things I'm realizing playing Perfect Dark is that there's a lot of... Uh, like, like the, the levels are little tiny sandboxes, and there's a lot of, mm-hmm. like... There's missions, so you have to, like, do a thing. And, and there's yeah. different difficulty levels, and the higher the difficulty, the more things you got to do in, in the level, yeah. in the little sandbox. Uh, so that had me running around a little bit. Like, like I remember a lot of the stuff you have to do cause I've played the freaking game before, but, uh, it had me running around a little bit. Like, uh, I had to restart, I think the second level of perfect dark because, uh, I just got so lost. I, I think I yeah. needed a key card and I couldn't find where the, cause you shoot a guy and he drops it and I couldn't find where he, he dropped it. Yeah. Um, so Something like that. I don't know. That's a little confusing, but eventually you figure it out. And um, I will say, Goldeneye is a much simpler game than Perfect Dark was. So if you've played Perfect Dark and you were a little confused by it or you found it a little challenging, Goldeneye is a much simpler, much easier to get into game. Anyway. Uh, oh. Yeah, there's more stuff. Angry Eric with 16 yeah. months. Love the content. Guys, keep up all you do for the community and the and for video games thanks dude uh the konami man thanks for the six months if mario golf on switch let you down bob try easy come easy golf 
that launched on Switch today, made by the Hot Shots and everybody's golf team. Also, keep up the good work. Thank you. I know uh, Kind of Funny is a huge fan of everybody's golf. Yeah, and uh, Hot Shots Golf was like a pretty popular PlayStation golf franchise. I guess they didn't... Or I guess like PlayStation owns Hot Shots, but uh, the team went on to do other things. So... Well, they, I, I think everybody's golf wasn't that a PlayStation exclusive. Uh, I'll have to look that up. I think it was. I think that's why kind of funny likes it because they're PlayStation people. Yes, they are. This, yeah, this looks like everybody's golf. I will have to check it out. Looks. Yeah, everybody's pretty... golf, formerly known as Hot Shots Golf, is a series of golf games published by Sony for the PlayStation series of video game consoles. Okay interesting all right uh now it's time Speaking of sony it's time for the state of play yes this was shorter yes and just as disappointing <laughs> <laughs> uh festivities kicked off with a release uh with a reveal for tekken 8 release date hasn't been shared with the game of the trailer not only mentioned a ps5 release uh, meaning it, it, meaning the latest entry in the classic fighting game series may be next gen only. So this was just like a cinematic trailer for Tekken with some some gameplay footage in it. Um, it looks like Tekken. I, I mean, it's you a know? little confusing because because it's a cinematic trailer that goes directly into gameplay. Yes, and, and it's I think they said it was actual gameplay, but it doesn't look like it. I think it, they said it, it was too in cinematic. engine. Which means uh, like it, that's what the that game's gonna look like when it's released, but you know they they still have to add like the GUI to it and I like don't, the the health bars and stuff. I don't think in engine is the same as actual gameplay. I, I no, I, that's no. that's concerning because th there's a lot of wiggle room there then for them to yeah. mess around with it and make it not like play like that. I mean, I don't think the game is gonna like look like this. I don't think it's going to stop midway through a match and go into a cutscene or anything like that. Well, um, there's fighting games that do that. That's true, but like Tekken is like a more of a classic style fighting game that doesn't do that. You know, it's, you know, two rounds to beat the crap out of each other. Whoever wins, you know, two out of three wins the the whole the whole fight. Does it I think it goes into a cutscene when you finish the fight though. It goes into like a big like like a lot like it, it like zooms in and like doesn't change the camera angle right and like does yeah. the finisher i think yeah i mean look i like fighting games i i enjoy a fighting game every now and then i i can't tell the difference between like tekken four or five and whatnot i mean uh, the graphics looked really good but again the, the I, i'm a little really skeptical good, about but that. like if i were to play this game i w couldn't tell you how it differentiates from all the other tekken games so I um, play, so our friend Jerry is a big Tekken fan and uh, yes. we went to an arcade years ago and mm -hmm. we played Tekken and he, we did a two out of three and he whooped my ass. But then I was like, I was like, swipe your card again. We're going again. I figured it out. And then he played me <laughs> again. And then I won another, I won the two out of three and I was like, go again. We're doing uh, best of nine or whatever. Cause I need to <laughs> prove that that first one was a fluke. And then I yeah. whipped his ass again. And I was like, fuck you, Jerry. <laughs> That's what he gets. So tech is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. The next game they showed uh, for going in order of what the state of play was, was Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. Um, it is a PSVR 2 game. It received a new gameplay trailer showing off a ton of different locations, enemies, and allies in the game. Um, C-3PO and R2-D2 are in it. So I was watching this, and I think Star Wars is maybe i don't want to say made for but i think the a great home for star wars is vr because yeah. it's yeah. like I, I it it's it's i mean george lucas said it's a friggin kids movie <laughs> <laughs> and and like the theme park experience for star wars sounds like a great time being immersed in this like other world or other universe yeah. uh it seems like it's purpose built for that and playing vader immortal was awesome and, and so this kind of gave me those vibes and i'm I'm actually kind of interested in this yeah no it looks really good and especially if uh you can't or don't want to go to galaxy's edge irl because either 
you know, you don't live in a, in a country that has a Disney world or it's too expensive for you, which let's be real. It is. Um, mm-hmm. This is, this is the perfect alternative. I'd say. Uh, next we got Demio. Demio, a cooperative dungeon crawler survival game also coming to PSVR 2. Players can fully immerse themselves in a tabletop-esque world, rolling dice and dishing out cards in VR. This actually looked pretty cool. Uh, yes. I, I, I'm not big into these types of games. I played a little Hearthstone and I kind of liked it. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know why. Like That's just a card game, but the cool little effects that it did made me feel cool. Like when you do a cool yeah. thing in the card game, it like, well, yeah, made me feel pretty like, cool. When you play a card game in real life, you're literally just putting a piece of paper down on the table. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> but like this, there's like pomp and circumstance, so it makes it seem like it's a bigger deal than it is. It could be like uh, like Yu-Gi-Oh. Like you're playing exactly. Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like the episode of the anime Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you've now you've seen. I might have played it on the show before the the the, the the Yu-Gi-Oh like VR like fan game or whatever. That's no, like, I've never seen. I that. think I've showed you the guy doing a. a I summon Pot to Greed to, to <laughs> draw three additional cards on my deck, and the guy's like, "You can't do that again." And he's like, "Watch this move! I summon Pot of Greed to draw three additional cards to my deck," and he's like, "You can't keep doing that." Uh, he's like, "That card doesn't do that," and he's like, "That's what it do," and the other guy's like, "That's what it do, Yugi." <laughs> It was very fun. <laughs> uh, as, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh is good. Yu-Gi-Oh is a good time. Uh, also, this actually looks like a good time. Uh, Yakuza's Inchin spinoff game is getting a remake um, and a re-release for the first time outside of Japan. It's called Like a Dragon uh, Ishin. It is being released on PS4 and PS5 February 2023. This is Yakuza's Samurai spinoff series. So I've never heard of this before, but Me this neither, looked but this looked this looked fantastic. awesome. <laughs> I know this looks so good. Like like Yakuza already looks pretty good, but this like took it to the next level. This looked yeah. freaking awesome. There's a lot of traditional Japanese looking games here. Yeah, in this, in I think this they thing. said this was mostly focused on uh, Japanese developers, right? Uh, this, I mean, I kind of want to give this game a shot. If I, I this is yeah. a weird game to jump into the Yakuza series with because it's yeah. like it has a lot of uh it looks like it has similar characters kind of like a yeah. like maybe like a back to the future type thing where they're like they just look like the the same characters but they're you know yeah. like ancestors or whatever mm-hmm. um but yeah this looks this look it, it, I, i'm interested yeah they're, they're freaking yeah, no, they're it, like they're it, it, it's one of those like samurai things where they're like sword fighting and also just shooting each other <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I know in uh, samurai cinema, Japanese samurai cinema, uh, the person who, who has the gun, that's like, you know, a big deal. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you're if you a samurai, but you possess a gun, that's like a, a status of power. And in some cases, uh, evil. Yeah, because that's that's uh, not uh, uh, noble not at honorable. all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're a huge asshole if you're if you're bringing a yeah. gun to a sword fight. Uh, if anybody's ever seen the classic movie Yojimbo, that's a big plot point in it. So uh, when you're done with this podcast, go over to HBO Max and watch Yojimbo and then get back to me and say, oh, my God, well, that was the coolest thing I had ever seen. Uh, and thank me and you will be welcome. Uh, next up was Pacific Drive. This is the first game from Ironwood Studios, and it will put players behind the wheel as they drive around what appears to be a post-apocalyptic version of of the Pacific Northwest. I'm curious what made them put this in the direct or whatever I'm try- this is called. I'm trying to look up Ironwood Studios. Yeah, like, I couldn't really it's find the first anything. game from them. Uh, so like, why is that a big deal? I was reading the chat like when this was showing when when this was being played uh-huh. in the in the PlayStation live stream and Somebody in the chat said Firewatch question mark and I was like, "Oh no, please don't be another Firewatch." Yeah. Uh but this looks pretty good. It, you're, you're actually it like driving around in like a in like a storm and stuff and it it it, mm-hmm. it it uh I'm actually a little interested in this. But you're in like a uh, station wagon type thing, so it's yeah. it's not like you're like off-roading. It's it's weird. It it looks it, I'm interested. Seattle-based game developer 
Saddle-based game development team made up of experienced developers with a long history in the industry. Okay, what are what's your credentials? Who's on your team? Yeah, why did I don't Sony bestow this honor upon you? What have you done to deserve know. this? I don't know any of you people. <laughs> I'm sure they've seen some merit in this game and they were like, all right, this is worth throwing in here. Yeah. Uh, f- yeah, no, sorry. Uh, I'm sure you're all lovely people. There is also Hogwarts Legacy is the next game. Uh, we uh, don't have to talk too much about Hog- Hogwarts Legacy. No, they basically uh, just announced like um, you're getting an exclusive mission on PlayStation. Is anybody here interested in Hogwarts Legacy at all? Because I don't know a single person. That's not true. I met a guy. I didn't really meet him. All right, let me explain. There's a story here. Okay. When I was in Seattle, uh, we were uh, kind of by the convention. We went to a coffee place. It was Monora- right. Monorail. It was very good coffee. It was the best one I right. had in Seattle, but I didn't have too much. So I don't want to say it's the best one, but it's the best one I had. And I got it for home, and it still is good at home. Anyway, there was a guy who was getting coffee there mm-hmm. who was a little crazy and he just kept asking everybody who was walking by with a PAX badge. Did you see the, did you see a Harry Potter game? Did you see a Harry Potter game? And nobody saw the Harry Potter game. I don't think it was there. I think he was just saying that. And then we walked like down to the, like, uh, like the, the, the fish market like area. Yeah. And we accidentally followed this guy all the way there. (laughs) <laughs> and he was asking every single person that he came across oh, about God. that until he got to a certain point and left the convention area and there weren't any more uh, gamers to talk to. So he just yeah. started telling everybody that it was $3 movie day. And he just kept walking up to people and said, it's $3 movie day. Hey, man, it's $3 movie day. You got to go to the movies. It's $3 movie day. And then we started. he started getting a little more ahead of us, but we still kept following him for an insanely long time and we did not mean yeah. to at all. But he was just going up to people and just, just blurting things in their face. In the right, 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 right. Also, I forgot to leave out this little tidbit about the guy. He had not one, not two, but three knives on him. <laughs> I feel like that's important. Like big, like big knives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you got people in the chat saying that they're excited for like Torres Torch it, Torres Tech and uh coffee and pizza. Um so I stand by this and I know I've said this on the show before. Um I stand by this statement. People like Harry Potter, but specifically they like everything in between the Sorcerer's Stone and Deathly Hallows. Okay. That's it. <laughs> you know, maybe the cursed child because it features the same characters, but just those seven books and eight movies everything else like maybe they'll experience it but it'll just go in one ear and out the other i mean that's a A lot lot like star wars it's a lot of star wars but even with star wars fans you always meet that one where they talk about oh you ever played uh jedi outcast games fantastic or hey you ever read uh the rogue squadron books those are cool or hey did you ever check out the the Dark Emperor comic that's the best Star Wars has ever been like well, there, there's always like an extra thing they are willing to talk about with Harry Potter it it starts and stops with the original books and then like everything else is just like white noise <laughs> well well there's just not as much Harry Potter there's not as much Harry Potter but there's still this attempt to try to keep making it happen I, th- I, I think make, eventually they're trying to make fetch happen and it's not happening because the fantastic beast movies uh, for all intents and purposes are bad. Um, <laughs> and not to mention the fact that JK Rowling has done everything she can to sully her name, but that's, that's the topic for another time. I think eventually it could get to the point where there's like good games. <laughs> like there's more stuff like there is in star Wars. Right. But, but, but these new big franchises that they're trying to prop up haven't been doing a good job at that. Like, for example, yeah. Star Wars has fallen off. <laughs> I'm, I'm not well, happy no. with Star Wars lately. Well, they still have they still have a wide swath of things for pretty much everyone. Yeah, they're shooting a shotgun blast at the wall and hoping that something hits the target. Well, at least, okay, they're shooting a shotgun blast and uh, hitting the target, but they have a lot of different people firing the guns. Mm-hmm. With Harry Potter, 
they have two people firing the gun. Warner Brothers and, and J.K. Rowling's pill. <laughs> yeah. So maybe like giving it to other people will help tremendously. Well, this maybe is a case Hogwarts of Hogwarts Legacy will be that game because right. it's, you know, uh, yes, she has her hand in it, but it seems to be a very minimal oversight compared to Fantastic Beasts and whatnot. So I don't know. We'll we'll see. I, I would love to be proven wrong. I hope, you know, one day down the road when my kids are in school, one of them says, hey, did you ever play Hogwarts Legacy? That game is cool. And my kids will say, no, I'm not a nerd. I like Batman and punch him in the <laughs> face. <laughs> All right, next is First Look Digital Collectibles coming to uh, PlayStation Stars. So this, uh, let me explain what this is. This okay. is PlayStation uh, uh, just just one just one toe over the line going into NFTs, realizing that NFTs are bad and that nobody wants them, pulling out but still having this project and doing something with it. So it's- this is just a useless like like digital collectible thing they give you little rewards in, in on your little PlayStation account for god knows what and it had that left it, it, it they 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 left the NFT feature behind so it's just it's even more useless now yeah part of me wishes this was an NFT program <laughs> because at least it would have a purpose yeah right <laughs> This does this serves no purpose. It's a 3D digital trinket of like something from Sony's corporate's history. Like there was a there was a turntable. It was one of the examples they used. Yeah. You know, it's not just PlayStation stuff. I'll say playing Astro Astro's Playroom, you yeah. get little trinkets that are part of Sony's history and it's awesome. Yeah. But like you earn it through the game. Getting yeah. it just randomly in your PlayStation account, or you look at it in your PlayStation account and go, ooh, ah, oh, wow, look at this 3D model. That's just, that's weird. That does, yeah. Uh, and I mean, like, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, look at my friends list and see la- and be like amazed that, ooh, this, guy, this guy's got a, a pocket station trophy. Ah, yeah. Well, he yeah. showed me all I have is this Mr. Polygon trophy. <laughs> It's very, very strange. It's very um, strange. Anyway, new toy, new story. I almost said Toy Story. New story trailer revealed for Stellar Blade. Oh, okay. So, so Project Eve. Yes. Is this, is this the Black Desert people? Uh, it's Korean studio Shift Up. So this this game Project Eve looked awesome. Yes. Oh, when they announced it. It, it, it looked like Bayonetta with RTX turned on. Yeah. Um. So now they it's not Project Eve anymore. They've found a name and it's called yes. Stellar Blade. And it yes. still looks pretty good. Yes. The trailer showed off a mix of gameplay and cinematics, giving players a look at the game's futuristic setting and story. It looks very cool. Yeah. I'm excited to check that out. Um, there was also, I think you skipped it, sin, uh, sin duality. What the I hell think is I'm that? pronouncing that. Pro- uh, now it's from Bandai Namco, third person shooter featuring mechs and an art style akin to near automata, uh, albeit with a little bit more color. Uh, trailer showed off the game in action alongside a 2023 release window. This is like, uh, it looked like planetary exploration. It looks like No Man's Sky with like an anime twist almost. Oh. How did I That's not on the uh What's the name of it again? Uh Sin Duality. Oh S Y N. I'm on PlayStation's site. I, it must be out of order a little bit. Uh maybe. Oh, I did see this. I remember this now. Yes. Yeah. This looked kind of cool. Yeah. Uh okay. Uh, Next, we have Rise of the Ronin. This is uh, from Neo developer Team Ninja, a PlayStation 5 console exclusive with a 2024 release window. Trailer showed off the gorgeous world set during a modernization period of Japan. Another situation with swords and guns. Yes, I'm sensing a theme here. Um, 
so this looks to be like I don't want to say like a more serious version of Yakuza Inshin, but you kind of get the sense that this is more of like a dramatic, uh, realistic take on the subject matter. Right. Uh, Because you have like people from the West coming over and modernizing Japan and, you know, the conflict of that. Um, I'm curious if it's Team Ninja. So I'm curious if this is going to be more of a like traditional action game or if it's going to be a Souls like game because uh, Neo is a Souls like game. But it's open world, so that leads me to... Although Elden Ring is open world souls, so who knows? Who knows anymore? I went to the website of Shift Up to see if they're the Black Desert people, and I'm not sure that they are. Mm. Uh, But I remember hearing that. Maybe it was some of the people who worked on it. But the website's in Korean, and I'm looking at their work. Or I guess this is the new games that they have. We got Project Eve. We got three games here. A lot of boobs. A lot of boobs. (laughs) So... If you love boobs, you're going to love. Uh, Black Desert Online was, was developed by Pearl Abyss. Okay. Korean development studio. I don't know if that helps. Maybe I'm just overlapping my Korean development studios. Maybe. Because uh, like the characters look very similar. Um, yeah. All right. Last thing. The big deal news. This was this kind of I got a little scared because they said one more thing. <laughs> here you go. And now uh, we were all everybody was like, that's it. That was the whole thing. Then they showed a controller for God of War. (laughs) And everyone was like, oh, no, is this it? Uh, To be fair, very nice looking controller. It is a very nice looking controller. Uh, But then, finally, they showed more of God of War Ragnarok. And listen, I give God of War a lot of crap. I don't think it's that. I don't think the remake or the or the re boot, the reboot. Reboot. I don't think the reboot was that good. I watched this. This looked awesome. Yeah, this, this, this does look good. very good. Um, it looks very dynamic. It looks like there's a lot of fun stuff happening. Uh, it looks very dramatic because these games are, if nothing, if not very dramatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, curious curious to see how this one plays out. Am I going to play it at launch? No, I will I will wait. I will wait till I have a monochrome of free time <laughs> to play a big game like this. But uh, I'm a little it looks confused. like it can be fun. The, yes. You played the first one, right? Yes. The first boss that's throwing trees at you and stuff. Yeah. Isn't that Thor? No. That's just a troll of some kind. Oh, I thought he was a god. No. The guy no. with the tattoos you... and stuff. He's like, is No, he that's like Balder. The... Oh, I thought it was Thor. That's Balder. Yeah, no, that's different. I didn't get you... that far. <laughs> I know. Well, spoiler alert. Uh, there's a post credit scene where Thor shows up at your door. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, he's in this game. You see him at the end of this game. Yes. <laughs> uh, man, it looks sick. Yeah. So, the first boss is Thor's brother. Is Baldor Thor's brother? Uh, I think so. Yes. Yes, because that's the whole reason why Thor comes after you. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, Okay. I think I think I heard Thor's brother, and I thought he was Loki. I think that's what it was. Well, again, <laughs> I think that's spoiler, where my wires got. Cr- I didn't know Thor had spoiler, brothers. Spoiler alert for the end of God of War, you know, twenty whatever. Uh, you find out that Atreus, the boy, is Loki. Oh piss! Yeah. So if you remember your Marvel comics, Loki is adopted. Right. So. That probably is a, the story of how Atreus becomes adop- adopted by the Greek gods, the, the Norse gods, rather. So the prophecy is that Thor kills. Uh, is this fucking so, name Kratos? Kratos yeah. <laughs> takes the boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Or maybe he just the boy just goes with Thor, and then the third game is him trying to fight his way back. Hmm. Uh, there were some cool lines in this, like uh, yeah. uh, 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 the boys like telling Kratos that he's going to die. And then and Kratos is like, uh, death can have me when it earns me. Yeah. <laughs> or something like that. I was like, holy shit, that was awesome. But anyway, looks very good. Uh, yes. And that now finally has a date that everybody's excited about. And it is this year. 
which is a little surprising. Yes. I think they confirmed that like earlier this year that it's coming this year. They did say that and I did not believe them. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> God of War is coming to PS4 and PS5 November yes. 9th. It's one of those deals where if you buy it on PS... Actually, no, I stand corrected. I don't remember if this is one of those deals where if you buy it on PS4, it's free on PS5 or if you have to pay $10 for PS5. Also, PS5 version. Uh, not confirmed for PlayStation Plus Premium yet. No. Also not confirmed for PC yet. Yeah. That's uh that those two things a little disappointing coming from uh coming from PlayStation. Well, I mean, uh I think we should kind of expect it cuz they they said that new games will not be released day and date in PlayStation Plus. I I I expect it. I'm still disappointed about it. Yeah. Uh also, I mean, They've talked about like yeah they're gonna put more games on PC but they made they made it very clear um, without saying it that it, they're not gonna do day and date on PC right. Uh, Rosa Sabe, thank you for the thirty eight months. Happy birthday, thank you. Ganthit, thank you for the thirteen months. Hello, hello. Uh, Will Davis, thanks for the twenty three months. Is this the little birthday boy? Happy twenty ninth <laughs> birthday, Bob. Thank you. I'm twenty nine for the. For the fifth time. Future. For the fifth time, I think. Tw- I turned 29. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and Nico Masso, thank you for the 12 months. And Jess the Vagabond, thanks for the 17 months. Happy birthday, Bob. Happy, uh, happy birthday to you, too. Um, uh, guys, it's September. Yes. Which means you get a discount of some sort if you subscribe on Twitch. So if you're ever thinking about subscribing on Twitch, you get ad- you get no ads on the podcast when you watch us here on twitch.tv slash Uh 30% off? Save up to 30% off on new subs until September 30th. I don't know what that means. It just means it's going to cost you less money. <laughs> yeah, something like that. So there you go. Uh, CG with five months. Merry Christmas, Bob. Thank you. Uh, anyway, let's plow through the rest of this news here. Yes. This one's going to be hard to plow through. We're getting elite controllers, baby. Yeah. Uh, fun. We can plow through this real quick. Uh, we're getting a new color variant of the elite controller. It's known as the elite wireless controller two. Uh, core, it's going to be two tone. It's going to be white and black, and it's going to sell for $130 US. Um, that now you notice that's cheaper than the launch of the original Elite 2, um, which launched at 180 That's because it's just the controller. The uh, white Elite 2 gamepad does not come with most of the accessories that are included with the black model. Instead, all you get is the controller itself. A braided USB-C cable and a tool that allows you to adjust the tension of the thumbsticks along with an extended one-year warranty. Um, However, they also announced, um, and of course it's not in this. Oh, it is. It's just got to scroll down. They announced a complete component pack, which will be available for $60. That will include all the accessories it's missing, including the back paddles, extra thumbsticks, um, and a charging case. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. I like this idea because it uh, the Elite Control is awesome. It does come with a lot of stuff you're not going to use. Uh, but I'm a little disappointed it doesn't come with the back paddles. Like the back paddles are very important. Uh, yeah. That's like oh. a lot of the reason to get an Elite Controller at all. And the exactly. case is nice. So if you can get yeah. just the case and the, and the paddles separately, even just the paddles separately for like a couple bucks, that would be a mm-hmm. huge deal. Are they selling them individually? I don't think so. What? The uh like any of the accessories. Just, like like uh, you, you you said you can get the accessories themselves, yeah. but can you get can you pick the accessories that you want instead no, of having to buy it, them? The all? Com- the complete component pack includes all of the accessories. So okay. uh the charging case, the additional D pad, the back paddles, and uh f- different thumbsticks. Yeah, it would have been nice if you can just 
pick the ones that, that you want so you don't have to buy yeah. everything. I do like the idea of... Uh, I do like this idea, though. I do like the idea of the cheaper yeah. elite, elite version. Um, uh, I do, too. I think that's a cool option. I will say, though, on Amazon right now, you can get a refurbished elite controller, the black version, uh, in excellent condition for $113. Ooh. And that includes everything. Wow, that's kind of awesome. So I guess it depends on what you want to do. Do you want to take the shot at getting a refurbished controller on Amazon mm -hmm. for a lot less money? Or do you just go out and buy uh, the new version? This is one of the nicest controllers you can get right now. I think the Xbox yeah. Series X controller is one of the best controllers out there. And this is the best yeah. version of that. Uh, although it is a little expensive, I'm excited about the design lab thing because I love yes, the design I was, lab. I like. I was the... going to get to that. Uh, oh, the company also on, announced on Wednesday that customers will also be able to create their own personalized Xbox Elite Series Two controllers in the design lab starting this holiday season. It has been the number one fan request since the program debuted in 2016, according to Microsoft. Uh, the company did not announce pricing, but uh, they said they would have that information at a later date. So. Yeah, I love the Design Lab. It's a great way to personalize one of the best controllers you can get. Um, yes. And that was one of my concerns was I want, if I'm going to pay this much to freaking do a Design Lab thing uh, and make my own custom controller, I'd want all the bells and whistles of, a, of an Elite controller. Uh, yeah. So I will be doing this when they announce them in the Design Lab. I will for sure try to get one. Um, yes. You will for sure try to get two. <laughs> Maybe. I was a little disappointed, though. Because the little trailer they showed, uh, these are, are kind of stupid. Like it's just it's just the face and the grips are black still. Yeah. So I tweeted this with the screenshot. They they had this cool big elaborate video and they showed these and I was like these aren't that cool. Like you just change the faceplate and that's it. Like that's not very custom. Yeah. And I tweeted that. Xbox responded. <laughs> <laughs> and they said there will be more to customize than teased here we'll share more closer to the holidays phil spencer personally saw that went down to the xbox social media team and said respond to this motherfucker. fix this he's gonna Do drag it. us uh so that's good news so that's why yes. closer to the holidays i will for sure be trying to pick one of these up uh yeah it would be great if it shipped before the holidays yeah um, I should note, um, as this article notes, that uh, if you put Design Lab aside, if you buy the white con uh, Elite controller and the component pack combined, that's $10 more than if you just bought the original Elite Series 2 controller at full retail price. So that, there's no savings there. To me... That feels like Microsoft's way of increasing the price for something it already uh, puts out. That's their version of Sony increasing the price of the PS5 around the world. Well, then you could just get the regular Elite controller then. Right. That's option still there. But if you want it in white, that's what you got to do. You got to buy both well, for a $10 premium. I'm going to disagree. Way of like, it's their way of like releasing a new product that's really mm -hmm. the same old product but still charging a little bit more for it i'm gonna disagree because it's cheaper <laughs> it's 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 the core thing and they got right. rid of all the crap that you don't really need so they put but, it out on the market for cheaper and, but all the crap that makes it an elite controller is ten dollars more now some of the crap that they released with an elite controller, and that makes sense because it's not a bundle anymore you're getting it separately true and if you want it all together you can still do that it'll just be in a different color this isn't a new controller it's just they're bundling it differently right i wonder if that means the, desi the design lab version uh is it going to be just the core i or... think i think it'll be the core but you will for sure have the option to have all the other stuff with it yeah and the design lab is pretty good at not being too much money like they charge for a, a couple things here and there, but for the most yeah. part, uh, the controller is really not that much more than getting a colored Xbox controller, like at Best Buy. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's like a no brainer. Like if you need a controller and you can wait a little bit, doing the design lab, you get a nice custom one that you could, you know, make yourself. It's like a little special thing for you because it's not that much yeah. more money. 
Anyway, um, all right, we got a Grand Wolf. Thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, new Nintendo Switch All LED coming out. It's yes, Pokemon. it's uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It looks kind of cool. I think it I looks like good. It. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm not a big fan nice. of red and purple, but uh, they kind of had to do that because it's Scarlet and Violet. Uh, but I think this is a well-designed uh, version, given those colors. Yes. Yes. I like uh, the two Joy-Con colors. I like that they have the little badges at the bottom. Uh, I think the dock. Uh, is a good design, and I think uh, the back of the Switch even is a good design with all like yes. the the weird graffiti art to it. It kind of mm-hmm. looks more like a Splatoon. Uh, I legit pinch, thought it was uh, Splatoon when design, I first saw it. But yeah, yeah, I think that I think this is good. I think if you're into collecting, you know, special edition Switches, this is one to get. Kate McCat in the chat says the dick is sick. <laughs> and then she said, Doc, with a bunch of stars. <laughs> I, just, yeah, I, had, okay, I had to Kate. call that out. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, Kate. Um, yeah, I like the little Pokeball on the dock. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, they, did, they did a good job with this. Uh, yeah. However, now this is uh, Nintendo charging a little more money. <laughs> <laughs> it does not come with the game, and it is $359.99. Yeah, yes. mm. There you go. Yeah. Uh, we also got a couple more details on Pokemon, but we don't need to go into that. Really. No, we'll just highlight the big ones. Um, there's auto battling. That is a big. So game. instead of like having to fight every random encounter, you could set it to auto battle, uh, so your Pokemon can fight in the wild without your supervision. Right. Um, f- there's going to be three stories taking place in the game, so I guess three stories simultaneously. Uh. Victory Road, Star uh, Starfall Streets, and Path of Legends. Uh, it's it's, it's like so, so. So Pokemon, this one's doing the thing where you can do whatever you want right off the bat. You could fight the gyms in any order and whatever. Uh, yeah. Every Pokemon game has like the gym battles, the Team Rocket thing with like the gang mm-hmm. or whatever, and then I don't know some other bullshit. Th- that's what the three stories are: the the gym battles, right. the Team Rocket bullshit, and then some other bullshit. So uh, it's just you can do them in any order you want. And then in addition, you got new characters, new Pokemon reveals, um, Titan Pokemon, returning Pokemon, and a map. That's it. Gryphonix says the legend encounter. Okay, that makes sense. So you got yeah. you got Team Rocket, uh, gym battles, and the and the the legendary Pokemon. That yeah. makes sense. A lot of people were assuming that you get the legendary Pokemon early on because it's a riding Pokemon. Maybe yeah. that's just the you could just do that path early. Yeah, um, you do that do that first before you do the gym battles and then the team rocket stuff. See, I don't want to do the gym battles too early because I want to I don't want to be too swole for the gym battles, you know. Oh no, I want to be massively <laughs> swole for the gym battles. I want to breeze through those. Okay. Um, set all my random encounters to auto and just level up in the beginning and wreck house this trailer didn't seem too heavy on the uh ride pokemon though though. like like it didn't it didn't show the legendary that much and i think you could just ride other pokemon um so you don't really need that one uh do the gyms scale or are they set we don't know uh there's still a lot of questions this trailer that they showed like we read off a bunch of information, but this trailer was like two minutes long. It, mm. it really didn't. They made a big deal about it and they really didn't show much at all. And we still don't know what the multiplayer is going to be like or anything. Uh, po- the Pokemon community went nuts about the auto battling, but it really doesn't seem like that big of a deal. I mean, it's a big deal in Pokemon because they've never done it before. No. Okay. So it's like a Pokemon go type thing. Yeah. Where you like, just like kind of throw the Pokeball at Pokemon that you like walk by. Um, yeah. Anyway. Uh. All right. Now we gotta start plowing through because these are these are the, all right. the gaff. So I'll well I'll summarize this real quick. Sony has responded to Microsoft's uh, claims that if they buy Activision, they will let uh, Call of Duty remain on PlayStation for a few more years. Of uh, Sony Chief Jim Ryan said in a statement to GameIndustry.biz. 
Microsoft has only offered Call of Duty to remain on PlayStation for three years after the current agreement between Activision and Sony ends. After almost 20 years of Call of Duty on PlayStation, their proposal was inadequate on many levels and failed to take account the impact on our gamers. Uh, we want to guarantee PlayStation gamers continue to have the highest quality Call of Duty experience, and Microsoft's proposal undermines this principle. So this is PlayStation chief Jim Ryan explicitly saying this is a bad deal because this is going to adversely affect our customer base. This cannot happen. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. So there seems to be a lot of beef between Sony and, and Microsoft right now. And it seems uh, yeah. like Sony is more pissed. Um, but... Yeah, Microsoft seems to be they're the, like it's fine, everything's fine, we're still gonna support it, and yeah. and Sony's like they are supporting it for exactly as much as the contract is, and they don't give the a shit about contract. after that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so they they don't they seem a little more skeptical about what Xbox is gonna do in the in the future of yeah. Call of Duty because I'm I'm assuming that those are the in development games, and once once yeah. there's new games in development, they'll have different deals. Uh, which uh, makes sense. He goes on to say, I hadn't intended to comment on what I understood to be a private business discussion, but I feel the need to set the record straight because Phil Spencer brought this into the public forum. <laughs> uh, uh, Spencer has said that Microsoft's offer goes well beyond typical game industry agreements, but it's not clear enough uh, to ease Sony's concerns over the franchise. <laughs> I wonder what those private conversations... Like, how are you having a private conversation with a rival? Are you just going to dinner? Like, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, this goes, like, going back to what we were talking about earlier, about, like, the rumors that Square Enix wants Sony to buy them. And so, Square Enix is putting uh, Octopath Traveler 2 on PlayStation now. Mm -hmm. uh, not Xbox. So, <laughs> it could very well be we're in a similar situation. I mean... It's a little different because Final Fantasy has never really been an Xbox franchise. Uh, but Call of Duty has been on the PlayStation since the PlayStation 2. Right. And every game that's gotten released on Xbox has also been released on PlayStation. They were well, like for in a tandem. For a time, it was the biggest multi platform game. Yes. It was like the one uh, you think about. Yeah. So, and you know, the fact that in most recent years, the exclusivity for early DLC and a lot of the marketing push was with Sony system. So for Xbox right. to take that over, like that is going to adversely affect them. Uh, I still think had the shoe been on the other foot, Sony would not, they would be absolutely ruthless about this. Yeah. <laughs> they would pull support immediately. Yeah. Um, Although I don't know, because they Sony now owns Bungie, and they're they're allowing them to continue to develop Destiny on multiple platforms. I think that is a lot of Bungie, like pleading. <laughs> yeah, I think Bungie is is I th well, I think they had contracts, and then I also think that was Bungie being like, for the love of God, let us fucking. Uh, uh, yeah. do what we want to do with this stupid game because they had a lot of problems with Activision. Bungie was at yes. odds with Activision yes. about that. So, uh, yeah, I think I think them being this whiny about Call of Duty is a little ridiculous because uh, uh, Sony does, they're very I think they're ruthless with their exclusivity. Well, I think I don't necessarily think it's, you know, silly. I think they have merit to it because I think the threat of Call of Duty going exclusive to Xbox is very real. No, it is. Get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's gonna, it's like, whatever, dude. Like, that's the business, man. <laughs> but, like, we've seen, we, we've seen Microsoft willing to play nice with, you know, Nintendo with right. Banjo-Kazooie and uh, Minecraft and uh, fucking other things I can't remember right now. Well, let's make a deal. Uh, Release God of War day and date on PC. There you go. You know, do start doing that shit, uh, Sony. <laughs> you know, like fucking let's, let's you know do a business, do a business. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, what's uh, next? 
Twitch is removing host mode in October, according to an update from the platform's what? how to use host mode help desk page. Um, on October 3rd, the host channel stream manager quick action along with the backslash host command will no longer be available. The auto host feature will be renamed suggested channels. The raid feature will remain. Oh, okay, that's fine. I was I was very <laughs> upset for a second because uh, I did not know about this. Um, I mean, if you listen, if you don't know much about Twitch and you maybe watch us on YouTube or you listen to this podcast, at the end of every podcast, we raid or we host somebody. Uh, yeah. Raiding and hosting is basically the same thing. And we, I might call it hosting, but we always do a raid. And yeah. it's like the same thing. Uh, so it makes a little it, it make it, it it makes sense to get rid of hosting as long as right. they keep raiding. I my brain broke and I was confused for a second. Uh, I'll also say there's auto hosting. So if you go to somebody's channel when they're offline, they will be hosting somebody else. Uh, that is a little confusing to people who don't know Twitch because you'll go to like twitch.tv slash wolfden and you might see like aj and you're like that's not bob what happened yeah <laughs> uh and if you don't know twitch it's just it's it feels like you just went to the wrong page so uh it makes sense to do some ui changes there so i'm not as upset twitch has done a lot of dumb shit i'm not as upset about this change right uh what's next what else we got of uh, ea uh sorry gamestop accused of wiretapping customers without consent what the fuck? A class action lawsuit filed by Miguel A. Uh, Lucia in a federal court, first reported by Bloomberg, says GameStop covertly wiretaps its, the communications of all visitors who utilize the chat feature at GameStop.com and shares the secret transcripts of those wiretaps with a third party that boasts of its ability to harvest personal data from the transcripts for marketing and other purposes. Uh, defendant neither informs visitors nor obtains their prior express consent to these intrusions. So basically, if you ever uh, communicated with GameStop chat on their website, the, the support chat, they are recording that information and giving it to third party uh, marketing firms and whatnot uh, without your consent. <laughs> so this seems very illegal. Yes. <laughs> so GameStop's done a lot of dumb shit that yeah. is kind of illegal. Uh and this is this seems like a thing that needs to uh be reprimanded hard of for. <laughs> uh the suit continues. Going from bad to worse, defendant shares the secret transcripts with Zendesk, a third party that publicly boasts about its ability to harvest highly personal data from chat transcripts for sales and marketing purposes. Rather than merely provide a software service, the defendant allows Zendesk to intercept and use the secret transcripts. Given the nature of the defendant's business, website visitors typically share highly personal and sensitive data with, defend with uh, GameStop, when using the website chat feature, uh, consumers would be shocked and appalled to know that the defendant secretly creates transcripts of those conversations and shares them with a third party. Uh, defendant's conduct is both illegal and offensive. So if you're so, for example, if you're talking to GameStop chat online and you might have to give them information like your order number, the address the package is being shipped to, credit card information. That they then save and send to somebody else to use for marketing purposes. Zendesk is just a friggin' like, isn't that just a remote application? Like, like to remote into people's like I've heard of that. Like people use no. that. It's like a widely used thing, isn't it? Uh, I've heard of Zendesk I think, before. Okay. Zendesk is an American company headquartered in California. It provides software as a service products. Uh, related to customer support, sales, and other consumer communications. That's like a lot of companies use that. Yeah. But the, the problem here is that GameStop is giving, is allegedly giving Zendesk personal information of its customers without customer consent. Right. No, I understand that. But that's, the, the that's article the made it seem like Zendesk was also part of the problem, but that's, that's people use that all the time. It's the, it's the way that, GameStop is doing this. Right. I don't I don't want 
this article sounds like it may have assumed that because they use Zendesk, they're they're doing some some things with it. But it sounds like right. the the most egregious thing is that they're recording people without their consent. Right. Right. Um, so just be careful, because oh, if you have ever talked to GameStop uh, chat uh, customer service through their online chat before, say, for example, when you bought Ghostbusters figures in 2020 and they didn't show up for like seven months because they just decided not to ship it to you personally, Will, they might have some of your information on there. Also, um, they, uh... You're on the, when you're on hold with customer support, you are still they can hear you. So, yeah, <laughs> whatever you're doing when you're on hold for like an hour, they they have they probably have all of that recorded. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. So that that's GameStop doing more egregious shit. What else we got? Uh, EA has established a new Battlefield studio that will be working on a narrative campaign for the franchise. Uh, the studio uh, Ridgeline Games is based in Kirkland, Washington, and is headed up by Halo co-creator Marcus Leto. Uh, the company did not share details about this new experience, um, when it might be released, or what platforms it will be available for, but the promise of a dedicated narrative campaign could be good news for Battlefield fans who were disappointed that the live service Battlefield 2042, uh, which had a poorly received launch in November, didn't have a campaign mode of its own. Um, so... They basically they created uh, EA created a whole studio dedicated to making Battlefield campaigns. Um, maybe this is good because Battlefield campaigns are generally bad. So <laughs> maybe just having one studio dedicated to working on a campaign for Battlefield, maybe it'll make it good. I don't know. Battlefield games have not been good in a very no, long haven't. time. I like Battlefield two. I uh, know three. I like the Battlefield three single player, but that's just because part of it was on the long island railroad and i, was I like, oh, liked, that looks cool i liked battlefield one because it felt different at the time right but then they screwed that up immediately with battlefield five and then they just went right back to regular old battlefield crap after that i so, have little faith in ea yes uh, uh, but but I but the last battlefield was not good, and they need to fix that. And I may be adding a campaign would help. I don't know. They need to do something I don't different. Know. Uh, yeah. all right. This is another thing that confused me because uh, here you have a picture of Black <laughs> Panther, Captain America, the girl from Black Panther. I forgot her name, and the a random Black soldier. Panther. Um. Okay. So I de I deleted the other article like an asshole. I shouldn't have done that. So. There was the D23, the Disney and Marvel game showcase. That was last week. Um, the big announcement from that was Uncharted director Amy Henning is working on a Marvel game starring Black Panther and Captain America set in World War II. So you play between four different characters. You play as Steve Rogers, Captain America. You play as T'Challa's grandfather. So oh. two generations of Black Panther ago. Uh, you play as a member of the Dora Milaje, you know, the the, the all-female honor guard of the Black Panther, and a an African-American soldier whose name I can't remember, uh, just a regular uh, regular ass soldier uh, during I, World I, War II. I thought he was part of Captain America's crew, but he does look like just a random ass soldier. Uh, I really wish I didn't delete that other article now. Uh, I don't think he's part of your crew. I don't think he's part of Captain America's crew. I think he I think, joins up with Captain America's crew. I think crew. Jackson told me that, and he did this thing where he just told me like it was a fact and just made it up. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that this picture looks really confusing when you see just the soldier standing there. But that's kind of, yeah. actually, that sounds really cool, having Black Panther's grandfather in it. That sounds really yeah. Cool. Uh, it's re it's a really interesting take, not just on those, uh, not just on those characters, but for a video game starring those characters, because mm -hmm. um, you assume this would take place in the modern day and feature standard T'Challa, Black Panther, and Captain America, and whatnot. But it's gonna take it's gonna explicitly take place in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Black Panther's grandfather Azuri, and. Uh, who's the name of the... Here we go. Gable Jones, a black howling commando created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. There you go. That, that's what. Yeah, he's and, a howling commando. He's part of... That's what it is. He is yeah, part of, part uh, of uh, the, the crew. 
Yeah. Uh, and Nalani, the leader of the Wakandan spy network, the precursor to the Dora Milaje. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. That is that is cool. That is a cool idea for a Marvel video game. I like that Amy Henning is involved. This will be the first uh, full video game she's directed since uh, leaving Uncharted 4. Mm-hmm. She was famously um, the creative head of uh, that Star Wars game Ragtag that got canceled at EA. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully this actually comes out. <laughs> uh, the Konami man says, I'm surprised they didn't try to shoehorn Wolverine in there too. There's still time. There is still time. <laughs> um, also announced, that was the big one. Um, also, Pokemon Go developer Niantic is developing a Marvel World of Heroes. So Pokemon oh. Go with the Marvel characters. Uh, a Marvel card game called Marvel Snap coming to PC and mobile. It's not a picture-taking game as it should be. Uh, we got more. We got more on Marvel's Midnight Suns, including a prequel anime series of shorts coming uh, later this year. Uh, we got Tron Identity, a visual novel coming right. next year to PC. We didn't get anything and- else good, right? <laughs> well, we got a we're getting a remaster of the Sega Genesis Gargoyles game. Oh yeah, what's that about? <laughs> uh it is a remaster of the Sega Genesis game Gargoyles. <laughs> okay, never based mind. on the anime Gargoyles. All right. Okay. So, that's cool. That's a really good game. And it's nice that it's being re-released in the present day so that uh all you whippersnappers can play it after you're done playing Goldeneye. We also got a Ubisoft event that told us about uh, some Assassin's Creed games. There's a new one coming out where you play the, the as bi- the bad guy from the Valhalla. Uh, yes, that's DLC for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The the big... Wait, the what? I thought this was deal. a new game. No, it's DLC for Valhalla, the last chapter. The, the big deal, Assassin's Creed Mirage is the next official game in the series. And that's going to take place around the same time as Assassin's Creed 1. And no, in no, the no. same... Yeah, 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 yeah yes. But you, you, it's the return of Basim Id Ishak from Valhalla. He's like, in oh. Valhalla, he's reincarnated this guy. I don't. I didn't play the game. I don't know how it works. But you do play oh, as the bad guy. Oh, from I, that see. Game. I just assume because it takes place in the Middle East, like Assassin's right. Creed One. It's that. It's that era. <laughs> I thought it was uh, Altair, and I was excited. But no, yeah. it's this guy. But no. Uh, okay. I might have played it if it was Altair, but I don't want to learn more lore. So yeah. Uh, but I think what's more interesting is they. T- I don't think they even did it in the forward, but they they teased uh here oh they they have it here Co- assassin's creed codename red uh finally it's like in yeah it's, it's a feudal it's japan a, uh, uh assassin's yes. creed game uh f- build as the next premium flagship title in the future of the series uh ubisoft quebec is behind the game uh they announced just a lot of lot of crap most of it assassin's creed they announced an Assassin's Creed anniversary documentary, which I know is going to be heavily skewed because <laughs> the creator of Assassin's Creed, Patrice Desolet, was famously fired by Ubisoft and escorted out of the building in handcuffs. So I don't expect this to be, you know, <laughs> a very, a very warts and all documentary on the franchise. So what do we know what he did? He he was the the creator and the creator and basically the project lead on the first two Assassin's Creed games. He left the company to start his own studio. Uh, Ubisoft bought that studio and then uh, fired him and had him escorted out of the building in handcuffs. <laughs> but we don't know what he did to get escorted out of the building in handcuffs. Correct. Okay. I didn't see this Rainbow Six Mobile. I'm a little interested in that. Oh, there you go. Unless it looks like shit. I don't know. I can't. I'll look at it later. Otherwise, yeah. that's it. Ubisoft forward. Uh, yay. Cool. Awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm still uh, not jazzed by Ubisoft. But uh, yeah, maybe I mean, I'll give them a chance eventually. 
it's nice that that we got a whole new Assassin's Creed game and whatnot, but probably not going to play it unless it's like radically different from what the games have been previously. Right. They said it's going to be different than the last three Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla. But we'll see. We'll see about the Tweet of the Week. Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! Tweet of the Week! This is by Lol Overruled. Listen, this weekend, insane amount of just Twitter content. I was just glued to Twitter <laughs> all weekend. Uh, and I just, I, I was just going through my likes right now, and I just picked this random one. It's by Lol Overruled. <laughs> Queen Elizabeth will return in Multiverse of Madness. Um, sure she will. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll talk to you people very quick because I'm a yeah. hungles and I gotta pee. Yes. I have an early wake up time tomorrow, but first we'll talk to anybody who left a comment on last, not anybody, a select few of you who were chosen, uh, from last week's, uh, Wolf Den podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. I'd also like to thank ha Hanuman for the four months and John got the juice for the five hundo bits. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Last week we got Quinn Anderson who said couch co-op split screen was awesome in older halos. I think will is right. Making people all buy the console, the service to play online and a copy of the game makes them more money. Also, like will said split screen on today's size TVs. Isn't bad at all. I'm telling you not as many people are going to use it. So they just fucking cut it. There's, I don't think, I mean, yeah, they'll make more money, but it's, they have a lot of things on the docket and listen, they had, they had a lot of time. They totally could have, it's just a mismanagement issue, but they had a lot of things on the docket. They're going to go through the docket and say, which one are people going to use the least? And they pulled that one. Is it a, is it a matter of less and less people are using it? So less developers are putting it in, or is it a matter of less developers are putting it in the game and therefore less people are using it. I think which came first, the chicken or the egg. I think I've explained this in the last po the last podcast. I think less people used it, so they started leaving it out of games because as if I'm a kid and we both got Xboxes, why would I come on over to your house and play a worse version of the game? <laughs> <laughs> I I disagree. I think that this was a case where the industry thought since everything's going online, that's all that matters. So they put all the regs in the online and cut out couch co-op with the added benefit of this meant that now we have to sell, we get to sell more copies of the game because more people are going to want to play this online. We need a child. Um, Anybody <laughs> here a child? Get in the Discord. Yeah. <laughs> that's not true. Don't do it. Yeah. Uh, Luke Antone says, what is the best, the biggest thing you want to see from a new portable emulation machine? Um, one that works. <laughs> I like what we've seen. Again, I, I like the Retroid Pocket 3 a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it has everything that I need. The only issue is it's kind of manufactured a little chintzy. It's a little, it's a little not great the way it was manufactured. So it would be nice yeah. if it was manufactured a little better. But, um, just make it easier and easier to set up. And I think the Retroid Pocket yeah. 3 does a really good job of making it easy to set up. Uh, so I don't really have any ideas on how to make these things better because I think that uh, we're getting, we're finally getting there. We're finally at a point where things are getting the way that they should be for, for in terms of emulation. I'd also yeah. like them to be, uh, you know, a little better at producing them. Like, uh, you know, I don't want to have to wait for a pre-order for months like 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 they're never in stock basically yeah daniel says i'm five minutes into the podcast and i think will should come out with an auto-tune solo album uh it's this was uh we had issues that's because yeah we had uh, issues and uh look i mean if i had auto-tune i'd do it <laughs> and it would just be the rantings of a madman but don't don't tempt me with a good time Goldenstein left a beefy comment. He said, my preferred way to play games is split screen. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like my friends and I like hanging out with them. Okay, that, that's understandable. Playing yeah. local co-op where it's shared screen or split screen doesn't matter. Also, not everyone has the same gaming machines. Some have a PlayStation, some have a Switch, and some have a PC, so we can't play online even if we wanted to. No. Pause. 
<laughs> that is more important. Having yeah. having a uh, cross platform play is way more important than having split screen. Um, and to play online on consoles costs like a lot of money. I know it's common now, but it's still absurd to me. Yes, I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. Uh, you need to make the games as accessible as possible. So having split screen, it's just sometimes it's just the only way you could play the game. Yeah. It sucks that split screen local co-op is not common anymore. If a game has online co-op but not local, it's a big deal breaker for me and my friends. Look, I'm not like against split screen. I think if I think it should be in every game. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's the it's the thing they had to pull. I I do think that like cross-platform multiplayer is a good alternative. Like if you're not going to have split screen, if you're not going to have split screen, at least cross platform multiplayer is good so that, you know, more people can play it. But that still runs into the issue of everyone's got to own a copy of the game mm -hmm. in order to play the game. Right. And I, I think that sucks. <laughs> um, Flo Joe says, Hey guys, longtime listener, first time commenter. Do you think the rise of the PS5 is due, oh, the rise in the price, is due to the second new version that has been seen and now circulating in Australia? What? The console could be more expensive to manufacture and better to run, but Sony don't want to admit they got it wrong the first time. So, uh, yeah, was so there there's a another sneaky. There's a second. No, it's an internal revision. So right. remember when the, the news broke that like Sony redesigned the inside of the PS5 to like be more uh, energy efficient and like better airflow? It was like a very slight change, right? Yeah, they they did it again. <laughs> There's a okay. new internal revision to the PS5. It does look different. Um, it doesn't make the thing perform any differently. It just, you know, runs better um, and cooler and whatnot. Um, I don't think that's why... Sony raised the price everywhere, you know, because theoretically, when you redesign your system, you do that because things are cheaper and easier to do. Um, so I don't necessarily think that could be it. I think just because everything's gone up in price. Right. So therefore, your PS5 now has to also go up in price. Uh, I, yeah, I think that they're, they struggle. They, I think they, when they released the stupid thing, they were already having manufacturing issues and they were having a hard time keeping up with demand and they were, and the, and the thing wasn't ready to be released. Um, yeah. and they just never caught up and things got more expensive and it just, it just became really difficult for them. So, yeah. uh, even though they've been very successful, uh, something went wrong and, and they had to charge more or they're just pieces of shit and they wanted to, to steal <laughs> more of your money. Um, all right. That's the last comment, yeah. So now yes. we're in the chat very briefly. Very briefly. Uh, but we also uh, got uh, Eric. Thanks for the 54 months. Uh, we got Dark Type with a thousand bits. Hey guys, sorry I'm late, but I am so happy about this Nintendo Direct and State of Play. The highlights for me were GoldenEye 64, P Pikmin 4, Tears of the Kingdom, Tekken 8, and God of War Ragnarok. I'm just happy we now have a release date for Breath of the Wild 2, but I was really hoping for Metroid Prime 4 new sad face Great direct, in my opinion. Dark type, don't scroll back in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he also gave us 22 months. Also, happy 22 months. Love y'all and keep up the amazing work on the podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mecha Dragon, sorry I'm late, bro. Just wanted to came back from watching the directs. Nintendo did a way better job than Sony did. <sighs> Nintendo had more stuff than Sony did. <laughs> I don't know if they necessarily were better. Yeah, I think they were uh, pretty on par with each other. It just depends on what you're into. Like, I'm more into the Nintendo stuff, so I was a little more into the Nintendo Direct, but, I mean, Nintendo yeah. kind of didn't have much exciting stuff. So, I, I, I don't... I was just kind of disappointed in both of them, honestly. But, right. uh... Anyway... Uh, Bob, I can now buy the high end 512 Steam Deck. Should I, or do I wait for some kind of better screen or something? No, you don't have to wait for it. Yeah. If you want to get the Steam Deck, get the Steam Deck. It'll probably be a while there, till they till they make a revision. There, there were rumors that like they're working on not rumors. It was like confirmed they're working on like a uh, a new version of the Steam Deck. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't wait to get a Steam Deck if you want it now. Just just get it now. You could be waiting for a really long time. 
Yeah. It, people are just getting their Steam Decks now. I know it came yeah. out a few months ago, but people are just getting them now. So this thing's going to be in cycle for a long time. On, but I, 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 it is Steam, and this is their first like good piece of hardware. So yeah. they could fuck it up and release more. So I, yeah. I, I always say just get the thing that you want. That the best time to buy technology is right now. Uh, Scott the Sloth, thanks for the uh, 200 bits. Too much farming sim schlock from Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they know something we don't. Maybe FPSs are out and farming sims are in. Probably. Um, I want a Steam Deck that's little can uh, and cute like a Switch Lite. Uh, I mean, there is the Aya Neo Air, but it's expensive. And that yeah. gives you an hour of battery life. I want one so so bad after seeing stuff at PAX. I want to play mobile. I know. Uh, it's really ruined the Switch for me. I really was not <laughs> expecting that. I was beating the drum that the Steam Deck could not possibly hold a candle to the Switch. But after yeah. having the Steam Deck, every game I see, I'm like, man, I'm just going to get it on my freaking Steam Deck. It's going to fill the same need, fill the same void for me. And the, the, the problem is, though, I have to give it a little bit of hindsight. Like, the Switch is just $300, and it could do everything. It maybe does yeah. it a little shitty, but it could do everything. The Steam Deck is a little more money, and it kind of only works as an accessory to a PC. I mean, you can use it. Right. In it, it mm -hmm. You can use it by itself, but having it with a PC is great. And that's really expensive to have that sort of setup. Yeah. That sort of setup ruined the Switch for me. But I'm privileged to have that sort of setup. Not everybody's going to have that. Anyway, uh, have you tried Joy-Cons by iOS 16 yet? No, but I I do plan on it. Okay. Anything else or are we done? Uh, we can be done. Okay, we'll be done. Thanks for hanging out. Yes. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Thanks for being here. Uh, I've been slacking on streaming. I got a lot of shit going on. Uh, I'll try my best to do it on Thursday. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, right now, uh, you're going to watch Jackson. Okay? Uh, let's go say hi to him. He's playing Splatoon. And we'll see you all later. Uh, if you want to know more about this stupid Nintendo Direct, you can watch the non-Nintendo podcast. Uh, goodbye. Bye.